Good afternoon, welcome to Rocky Stone Park. Here we are November 14th, 2009 for the 12-man NBIA Football Championships. Proves to be a real good tilt today. The last time these two teams met was 26 years ago, and you can see in the background that they're introducing those guys that played that game 26 years ago. That time, Harrison Trimble won. It was a tight game, 22 to 20. This year, will it bear out to be the same? Who knows? Moncton High is certainly gunning for a, a title t this today. Last year, they felt that they had the team to win last year, but they came up a little short. So this year may be their year. Year. They've been walking big with a bit of a swagger through the year. Harrison Trimble's been a little quieter in the background, both playing as, as best as they could through the season, but it turned out to be an awful tough division here in the East this year. No team went undefeated. No team was dominant throughout the season. As a matter of fact, when we take a look at the graphic up on your screen, we'll see that both of these teams had, had their challenges for the year. Moncton High finished second tied in the East. They were tied with Riverview High, actually, but Riverview did win that tiebreaker to, to force uh, them to host the, the playoffs with a 3-1-2 and two record. Moncton High tied review twice through the regular season and they lost once to McNaughton. Harrison Trimble, on the other hand, finished with a 2-4 and four record. Most people would think a 2-4 and four record in the regular season wouldn't be enough to get you into the playoffs. However, this year, it was enough. As we look at uh, what uh, Monk and I had to do through the playoff uh, road, they had their quarterfinal game where they had to travel to Riverview, as a matter of fact, but they had a huge win there. Two regular season ties translated into a 24 to nothing victory for Moncton High in that quarterfinal play, which then put them in a position to host from the West. Fredericton High upset their first place uh, team or Mokto in the West. And so Fredericton and I had to travel on the road here to Moncton, and they played in the semifinal game, which Moncton was successful in, in winning 17 to 6. Harrison Trimble's playoff road, a little different. They had to take on the number one McNaughton Highlanders that were placed first in the, in the East here, but they upset them in a 10 to seven win. And many people feel that the, most of that victory relies on the fact that John Toogood, the quarterback, the young quarterback from uh, Harrison Trimble, was able to connect with Steve so Fox so many times and in so many key places. They then had to go on the road to travel to St. John to play against the Greyhounds, where they beat, beat the Greyhounds 20 to 14. That was a 14-14 game late in the game, and but Harrison Trimble was able to pull out the victory with last-minute heroics. Again, Steve Fox played a very key point in that game. The defense all year long for Harrison Trimble has kept them competitive game to game. Moncton High and Harrison Trimble have met head-to-head -head already this season. We see on this graphic here. They met back in week number three on September the 18th. Moncton High beat Harrison Trimble 31 to nothing. That was a bit of a drubbing, and even the head coach from, for Harrison Trimble would be the first one to admit that they couldn't quite get their cylinders firing, and they, they really did get behind early and were never able to recover. However, they were able to put together a couple of victories on the road after that. Uh, they did uh, meet up with Tanshamar and start to get their uh, confidence going, and then when they met them again October 9th, the annual homecoming game for Thanksgiving that turned out to be a real burn burner. As a matter of fact, Moncton and I had to come from behind to win that game. The final score was 13 to 12, so a lot closer than the 31 to nothing earlier victory. What proves to, is going to prove to be a very interesting game today. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that we're going to see two excellent football teams out on the field today, and there's going to be a lot of hard-hitting uh, plays going on. Defenses will, will prove to be a big factor here, but I think that what we're going to see is two very athletic quarterbacks be able to move out of the pocket and complete those passes. What we've just seen behind us as I was giving you the intro was uh, the dedication of Jeff Burns, a young player that played for uh, Harrison Triple Trojans back in the 80s, died tragically as at a young age from cancer and Harrison Trimble today has retired his sweater so that's a nice move on their part and it's nice to see these two teams come together on the field and celebrate their past victories and their past defeats today is a, is, is reminiscent of the old days Harrison Trimble owns the edge in, in uh, lifelong championship trophies they own 14 of the Ed Skiffington Ch Cups but Moncton High is number two with 13 they haven't met together like I said before since 1986 and 1983 sorry 26 years ago However, they have had their successes in the years between then and now. Moncton High last winning the, the uh, provincial championship in 2002, and that was a subpar season for them as well, finishing 3-3, three and three, but they made the run through the playoffs. Harrison Trimble, the last time they won, was in 2001. Again, they were also a subpar season that year with a 3-3, three and three, but they ran the playoffs. So these two teams, they always play each other hard. It doesn't matter what game we're talking about or when we're talking about in the year. They always play each other hard, and it should prove to be a great game. We're going to have the play-by-play -play and the color for up in the booth, and our play-by-play -play man is going to be Steve Ridlington, voice of the Mounties, giving his uh, his work to us today. We appreciate that. And Stuart Frazier, longtime player, longtime coach in, in this area. Many people know Stu. He'll be handling the color. Guys, take it away.
Thanks very much, Jeff, and uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this 12-man provincial championship. We are at Rocky Stone Field, and Stu, uh, what can you say? This is uh, all East, all Moncton, and uh, we're estimating the crowd in excess of uh, 3,000 fans here at uh, Rocky Stone to enjoy this afternoon's ball game. Well, Steve, at the sound, uh, at the risk of being a little biased from this area, I think this is the biggest football game that uh, uh, has been Prince played in New Brunswick. Look at the numbers. I mean, you just don't get any bigger than that in high school football. This is it. This is the cream of the crop, and and what, so fitting to have two two teams who, up until 19, well, I don't know what year it was 80 or 1970, whatever it was, nobody had ever won a provincial championship except for Harrison Trimble and Moncton High, and they're back again. And it's it's just fitting. Beautiful facility. If you can have a sellout crowd, I don't know how many people can stand in there, but it is just going to be a wonderful, great game. Excellent, and we're looking at uh, two solid teams uh, coming into this ball game and looking forward to uh, a great matchup. Uh, as Jeff shared with us, Moncton High successful in the two meetings during the regular season, 31-0 and 13-12. Ladies and gentlemen, the crowd is quietening now for our national anthem. these uh, respective rosters we see that each team uh, certainly benefited from some all-star play uh, Moncton High showing four all-stars including their quarterback number 17 Dylan Rogers the offensive player of the year in the Eastern Conference and also uh, five all-stars on the Trimble side of the ball including the lineman of the year number 92 Tyson Gilcash uh, wearing the colors of the Trojans and our game brightened also by the presence of two cheerleading squads uh, from both of these high schools that we're taking a look at the Harrison Trimble Trojan cheerleaders just moments ago. It's uh, uh, the, the, the electricity in the air, Steve. It's, it's, it's good. The color, the pageantry, and, and like I said before, having two teams with such a, a storied past coming together to play, I'm really, really looking forward to it. And an exciting game. You're going to see some very good athletic plays today. I, I, in particular, and I, and as I've spoken before about it, being a receiver, I'm a little bit partial to quarterbacks in the throwing game, and, and the receivers, I think you're going to see some excellent, excellent plays today. Number four of the Trimble Trojans, that's Will Rocklow. He will boot it off to uh, the Purple Knights. Uh, the Harrison Trimble Trojans in white. They'll be running from the left to the right of your TV screens at home while uh, the purple and white of the Knights will defend as they run right to left in this first quarter. 81 of Moncton, that is Matt Toogood. And at number nine, Luke Dickinson are the deep men. It's taken by number two. He's at the 20, the 25, the 30, the 35, out to the 42-yard line. And uh, that is a number two, Mark McDougall. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a resident of Sackville, too. And uh, last year, McDougall wore the, co the uh, colors of the Tantamar Titans. But 
uh, transferred to Moncton High this year and is making an impact with the Purple Knights. Well, I guess, uh, you know, Tatchemeyer's lost certainly Moncton High's game because he is a player, and he can, he's going to feature very prominently in Moncton High's offense. Here's the quarterback, Rogers over the ball now. There's the give to McDougal. McDougal picks up five yards on the play. Now both these teams are, are offense. They, they have very uh, skilled players, as I may say, on the offense. They can throw the ball, they can run the ball. Uh, good solid offensive lines, well coached offensive lines, both teams. Are, and I, I like to talk about the coaching staff. Some of the time, maybe get Jeff to chime in on some of that later on. Second and five for the Knights. They're at their own 47 yard line. Shotgun formation, Rodgers. Runs left, going to keep it, looking for a receiver, but decides to carry the ball himself, and he's got room before he steps out of bounds. A little bit of collision there between officials. They mark the ball at the 50, check that, the 49-yard line. Here's the replays to him. This is one of those athletes we're talking about. He's got a man open down the field, but he wants to get the first down and make, make some yardage and make things happen. So they, he's showing himself as a threat right away, so Trimble's going to have to adjust to come up. They come up, maybe he can dump over top. Rogers, uh, going to be interesting to see uh, Rogers the scrambler. So McDougal is uh, in the backfield uh, along with a couple of three wide receivers to the right. There's the handoff to McDougal. McDougal at speed down the line of scrimmage, wants to cut, gets some distance. There's a flag on the play. That was a block in the back. He's driven out of bounds at the 46 yard line of Trimble territory, but we do have the flag down. We'll be moving it back. Probably, be, probably first and 20 in this one, I would say. It looks like a push in the back. Field. Illegal block it is, and back they go. So they will back, uh, the line of scrimmage will go back into Moncton High territory. They will be first and 20 at the 51. So they're giving them some uh, extra yardage on the basis of the penalty. Rogers now. Heavy in receivers on the right side. We'll see what happens. Rolls out to the right under pressure. Has to get it away. McDougal tried to grab it. Did that come off? Is he a lefty or did they toss it with his own? He is a lefty, okay. Yeah, it looked like he was Good throwing pressure. across the body there, but they've got a middle linebacker, uh, uh, Chris Cornett, who's, who's a, 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 a tremendous player, uh, all star, I believe, and he he just took an angle at it and forced that throw a little a little early. I think Dylan would like to have that one back a little bit. Once again, we've got a second and twenty situation uh, for the Knights. They're at the fifty-yard line. No score. If you're just joining us at home, uh, the twelve-man provincial high school football championship here on Rogers TV. Rogers rolling left, rolling right, under pressure, has to throw it away. Nobody there, and a, a trio of Trimble defenders in and, his face. And there's one, two, three hankies down on the field. I think we all know what that was. This is not uh, Intentional grounding. This isn't the NFL, the American football. You gotta have a receiver somewhere near it. The closest was a person of purple over here on the sidelines, I think. Yeah, penalty declined, and uh, that'll bring out the uh, punt team, I would think. Not willing to take any chances this early in the ball game. Interesting as we look, uh, we're just I'm just comparing notes visually to our our coverage of the ten man game. These these cats look a bit bigger physically. Is it me or is it? Well, no, we had said that. The one thing missing out of the ten man game are the bigger people. Low snap to the kicker. Has to react quickly. Does gets a decent kick away. That's number seven, Sam Zied. 81 uh, can't get anywhere before the play, the play is whistled dead. That's uh, the ever dangerous Steve Fox, an offensive all-star, also playing on special teams. So, Stu, uh, in our intro, you talked about the two good Fox combos. So that, I'm excited to see what that's going to look like. Well, I have to say is, you know, they're, they're both excellent quarterbacks, both Monta High and Triple. But as far as a quarterback receiver situation, I've never seen anything better than that combo with Fox and uh, Two Good. All right, we'll wait and see if the Purple Knight defense has something to say about that, uh, Steve, but, or Stu, at least. Uh, 9.40 in time running, no score here. We're in the first quarter. Moncton High versus Harrison Trimble. Whistle on the play. 
Timeout. I don't think Moncton had their uh, defense on that they wanted. Some alignment wasn't just quite right, so they used it. They burned a timeout, and, yep. and using a timeout in the first half, we know, is, isn't you know isn't as crucial as let's say in the in the uh, second half. Let's go downstairs to uh, Jeff Reith. Uh, Jeff, your comments. Just. Uh, Taking a look at the, the Moncton High bench, they're a little concerned about the early penalties. They're trying to get their guys settled down down here. Uh, and yeah, you're right, they did not have the right defense out here. Coach Alnack was immediately yelling for a timeout there to try to get the, the play to stop because he knew his guys were out of position. Uh, I think that they're going to be looking at trying to be as aggressive as uh, obviously Trimble was in that opening series for Trimble to uh, shut down Moncton as, as effectively as they did. Jeff, but uh, like we'll have to see how it plays out. Jeff, what's it like over there on the, on the sidelines? I see you right in between the two benches. Can you feel anything? Can I feel the the the, uh, the noise down here is unbelievable. I can barely hear you guys, but we've got a tailgate party that's going on in the parking lot behind here, and we got quite a vocal crowd behind the fence, so it's <laughs> it's quite an event down here for sure. Thanks, Jeff. We'll be back to you later. There's the handoff. Wow, he a, a great effort by the ball carrier, but he met a wall of purple. Jeff McCarty was the ball carrier fullback, but man, he, you saw him slam the wall when he hit those two defenders. This, this is where I think we're going to see just what type of a passing game that uh, Trimble's going to have. Because if, if, if they feel good and they feel confident, they'll come out throwing in this down. It'll set a tempo for the game. They've got to get it, find a rhythm. That's John too good at quarterback for Trimble. Over his center now. No. We've got flags on the play. The um, Purple D of the Knights uh, saw that coming. We'll wait and see what the infraction is. The illegal procedure is the call against Trimble. Okay, help help our fans at home understand the concept of illegal procedures too. What what typically happens in a situation like that? Uh, basically, a, a person will move before the ball on the offense. A person will move before the ball is set. Once an uh, offensive player comes to a, a set position just before the ball is snapped, they've got to hold that position unless they're a receiver, running back, one yard back, or off the line of scrimmage. In this particular case, somebody moved early. All right, and as a result, uh, you know the defensive team can move, but it was initiated by the offensive team, thus a penalty. That is number four back to punt. That's Rocklow. Gets one away. It uh, wobbles through the air a little bit and uh, will roll out of bounds. Not not a bad situation as far as the Purple Knights are concerned. Uh, the combination of a little bit of a shank and uh, a rollout gives them excellent ball position. They'll be first and ten at their own 54. You get a little bad of the field position going already. Monk and I making a first down or two, you know, and then K and Trimble not make it. You can see that the punting game is trying to even it out, but it doesn't. And you can see that Monk and I is now starting, you know, almost in center field. So they're winning the, the battle of the kicking game or the or the field position game at this point. Purple Knights back to the ball, first and ten at their own 54-yard line. 8:28, the clock is running. No score as yet. We're here in the first quarter at Rocky Stone Field in Moncton. That's McDougal, the ball carrier, finds room, gets up, twist, turns. He's out to uh, the 51 yard line of uh, Trimble territory. He will pick up five yards, second and five. Trimble comes up, turns it inside, 21 turns it inside. He just positive yard. He's McDougal. Every step forward is a gain. So he's a smart football player, tough football player. We'll talk a little bit later about the, all the importance of yards after the catch and uh, just that extra effort by, by ball carriers. A little bit of premature movement there. We saw it. McDougal again running, running through. Got the first down and some more. We'll see who uh, caused the problems there flag-wise. I think we had, I think we had Mount and High. They were jumping. One official signaled Mount and High. The other official signaled Harrison Trimble. So they're pointing different directions. So I guess Bill Pickerel, our head official, a uh, long-time head official, has to make the, make the decision whether one move was movement was caused by the other. Okay, the uh, officials are deliberating as we wait. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be, it looks like procedure against Moncton High. If we saw that, you would see that the Moncton High player moved, caused the, Indeed. before the snap of the ball, the Trimble player jumped before the snap of the ball, but the Trimble player moved in reaction to the movement from the Moncton High player. That's what it would be called procedure. All right, you have hit the nail on the proverbial head, and uh, that caught, that nullifies. Let's watch it. One player moving. Yeah, we can see the player down here. Uh, closest to us, that's Mc, McDougal's effort is nullified there. But uh, it'll be second and 10 for the Purple Knights. And they're back at the 54 yard line of Moncton Territory. This is where Dylan Rogers does what he does best. He's a threat when he rolls out. He can run, he can throw. 
Rogers gets it in and out of the hands of his receiver number 81. The pass is incomplete. That was Matt too good. Cousin, it might be said, of the Trimble quarterback. That actually went in the hands of both players, McDougal and too good. So it, it's, it's unfortunate that McDougal had a play in it, but I think his hands get up. It might have interfered with the ball a bit as it went to the other two good. So. And a uh, punt team will come in for Moncton High. That is same Saeed. And uh, only one man back, yeah, the ever dangerous Steve Fox, uh, will be there for Trimble. Ball comes down, bounces, rolls out. And he just type roped on the line, but went out of bounds. The ball will be, the Trimble team will be first and 10 at their own 21. Even Steven here, uh, Stu, so far in terms of give and take. Uh, still, I think as you were mentioning in our first broadcast this afternoon, a little bit of uh, feel out the other team, shake out the nerves, get your game down to no. the normal routine. Now this is, you're right, They've, they, we, we, we see uh, them settling into uh, um, what they do. They're, they're not afraid to throw the ball. They're not afraid, uh, afraid to run the ball. Uh, again, defense is quite equal. Offense is quite equal. Uh, nothing, nothing to, you know, of any note sticks out right other than what they normally do and do well. Give to number eight, so uh, that is Matt Seely. We're trying to run, but uh, big wall of purple up the middle. Uh, Jeff, uh, it's a hot stove league over there. I can see that, you know, from this vantage point, we have all the, uh, the, the pseudo coaches over behind there. You must be hearing some good comments. All right, Trimble back to the ball now. And they are first, second and 11 at the 20. Too good rolling out to the left, looking for a receiver. Airs one out. It is complete to his intended receiver. That is Aaron Hamilton on the left side. Major yardage gain, first down for sure. Line of scrimmage now at the Trimble 50. So they picked up a good 25 yards on that. That Pass was, and run. That was an excellent route. Their inside receiver ran, ran a post corner. What we mean by a post corner? You go down the field about 10, 12 yards, fake towards the end of the uh, middle of the field, which the goalposts are located, then head to the corner of the end zone. And that fake to the post really, really drew in the uh, Moncton High defender and left. And the ball was thrown before the guy was looking. Excellent combination there with the receiver and quarterback. Too good over his center now. There's the give to 15. On the play, that he, he gets modest yards up the left side. That is Brett Robart. Brett Robart, the ball carrier. Will mark the gain at about three yards on the play. Yeah, they mark it at three, so it'll be second and seven for the Trojans. They're at their own 53-yard line. Just go back a, a play ago, Steve commenting on the, the confidence. When a quarterback can throw the ball before his receiver is looking, you know they're, they're, they have confidence with each other and confidence he had time. The offensive line gave him time. So both teams are going to be working on that and relying on that. Too good wants to go to the air. He's rolling out to the right. Here's one. Here's a major spiral in and out of the hands of number 89, the intended receiver. That was Dave Boulay, but he had a great shadow in the uh, and the, in the key defenseman, Colin Irving, number eight. Uh, give us your receiver's uh, perceptions of what happened there. Well, uh, the ball was a bit underthrown, and it looked like the Moncton High player had the best play on it, but over top, a, a big, tall, uh, a uh, what was his name? Uh, uh, Boulay, I believe. Boulay. David came over top, and, it, you know, he had a chance to make a play, but it was, uh, I thought for a minute that the, the, the Purple was going to have their hands on that one. All right, we're back. Uh, that is uh, Rocklow will get the boot away. Get, woo, gets a bit of a bit of a wobbler offline, and we'll see. It will be taken by number three of uh, Moncton High. That's Jordan Bedard, and uh, he will give his team. He got about he got about three yards on the return. It will be set up first and ten at the 34-yard line of Moncton High. Again, the game seems to be played inside the 35s. You know, there was a little bit of chance hit Trimble's down a while ago, but that long uh, reception uh, evened things up, and the game's being played in between the 35s. Seems difficult not to be talking about the Fredericton High Black Cats when you talk about a 12-man <laughs> uh, championship. Uh, uh, not too much sympathy in the greater Moncton area, I guess, but uh, 
to all our fans in Fredericton and elsewhere in the province of New Brunswick, we say a big hello. Uh, the high school product in the New Brunswick is a great uh, football product, and we hope you enjoy the 2009 season. Here come the Purple Knights now. They give us to McDougal. McDougal finds room. He's got the first down. And uh, he, uh, he's like a Timex kind of guy. He uh, takes a look at him and comes back ticking. Excellent block in number 51. Todd, right there. There's the block. 51 made an excellent block on, uh, from Monkton High and really, really made that play run. And they gain the first down. And there are the young ladies of the uh, cheerleading corps of uh, Trimble. And I might say Moncton High has their cheerleaders out. Mascots are here. Everybody's having a great time. We estimate the crowd at somewhere in the three to 4,000 range by our chat with officials here at Rocky Stone. We have a timeout, a call. It looks like McDougal is down for the Trojans. At least he's the player with his helmet off. Like to see what's happening. The training staff out to check things out. Jeff, can you hear us over there? I hear you over here. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Num number six, uh, Nick Cunningham for the Moncton High Purple Knights. After that last uh, that punt that uh, they uh, started to, that they returned, number six came off holding his hand. It looks like he's done for the game. He's over here in the being looked at by the doctors and the training staff. Uh, starting DB, grade 12. So that's uh, that's upsetting for him for sure. I see, uh, Jeff, like I mentioned before, I don't think you heard me before, you've got quite the old hot stove league here behind you. Are you hearing any good comments? Are people uh, preaching anything or well, giving you advice over there? See, most of them I played against when I played or I coached <laughs> against, and right now they're taking shots at me, not so much the game. So we'll see how, how the day uh, develops. Maybe you can pick one up the interview. We'd love to hear their thoughts, wouldn't we? <laughs> well, sure. I'll tell you what, the next time we have a bit of a break in the action, you come on down here in the second quarter, and I'll have some uh, sound bites for you. Uh -huh. Thank you so much, Jeff. We appreciate it. That's Jeff Reith, our sidelines guy, and uh, doing a great job for us today. Here come uh, the, tr the Purple Knights back to the ball. They are first and 10 at the 50-yard line of Trimble territory now. Rogers over the ball, takes the snap, the handoff to uh, number eight. Just one hand down, no need, however, and he makes a great effort. He may be close to the first down if he does not have it. That's Colin Irving. Never giving up in the play. That was the thing. He was wrapped up a couple times, and you could see he just keeps the feet moving, keeps his shoulders down, deflect the hit with the shoulders, lower your shoulders, use your hand. Good effort. Good effort all the way. Got a couple of great deeks there in traffic, so good effort by Irving. There's the purple man group. He's only, uh, <laughs> only one of him. Moncton on the keeper. Not sure they got a whole lot. That was uh, Rogers himself. I think he's, yep, it was enough. All he wanted to do was get that ball length to get the first down, and they move the sticks. They are first and 10 at the 39-yard line. That was just a little tap, Steve. He went up base, so I don't even know if he called it a uh, cadence. Everyone get up to the line without saying anything. He just gave the center a little tap and snapped the ball to get the yards necessary. Here come the Purple Knights now. They are putting a bit of a drive together. 39-yard line of Trimble is the line of scrimmage. Uh, there's the run to McDougal. He's back in. Bounces off tackler. Still on his feet. What an effort. First down, Purple Knights. Those are the things that can inspire the team. That, that effort, seeing one of your teammates run like that, that is inspiring to other people. And you bring other people along, hop on the, on the wagon with you. As you can see, this, this kid just wants to run the football. He wants to play hard. Got to wrap them up. Got to wrap them up. He bounced off. He bounced off two tackles, did McDougal, and brought his team inside the 30. There, first and 10 at the 26. Pressing the red zone now, the Purple Knights. There's the give to McDougal. McDougal once again has room. Still on his feet. Still on the way. He's inside the 10. Inside the five. Touchdown, Purple Knights. <laughs> Not to be denied. He's not going to be denied. He just wanted that. You could just see the way he's been running the ball. And we said earlier in the, in the game that he's, he's going to be one of the keys to uh, Mountain High success this evening offensively. And here it is. Take us on the replay. Well, you can see just a, a simple, uh, what we call the, the, the two hole or the A gap, runs straight up, and the rest he makes happen on his own. You can see he's breaking tackle after tackle after tackle. And uh, Trimble, they're going to have a talking to by their defensive coaches because they're not, they're not wrapping up. The snap is up. It's good. Convert by number 10. And that is a Lucas Constantine. 
And Stu Fraser, we have a 7-0 game in favor of the Purple Knights. I would dare say that you'll be seeing, uh, see some white uh, uniforms sitting on the bench and the defensive coaches will want to talk to them because they were in position. They've got to make, they've got to wrap up. They know it and nobody, nobody feels worse than the people who make those tackles, but they've just got to now be inspired themselves to come back and answer back. So the Purple Knights uh, taking first quarter lead. We've got about a minute and 42 left. Jeff, any reaction on the bench relative to that uh, offensive effort? Well, it looks like uh, obviously Trimble is really d uh, disappointed to allow that to happen. But I think that what's going on that we're seeing here, Moncton High is being patient in, in their play calling. They know that uh, Trimble is really sending the house at their backfield. And uh, they're just picking, they're waiting to pick their times. Mark, Mark McDougal is a patient ball runner. And I think that uh, being a little over aggressive on the defense for Trimble hurt them there. Here's number 24, the return man for the Trojans, uh, Jeff McCarty. He showed us uh, showed us some great acceleration, but most of it lateral, not a real good, re a solid return, about 15 yards. That's interesting. I, I, as we watch the games uh, today here, on the field, some some athletes have been slipping, and it's very unusual for them to do with uh, this type of uh, field turf. And I'm just curious, as, as the, their foot, their, their cleats have chosen for today, but there seemed to be a little bit of slipping to it. Then. Yeah, I think uh, you mentioned also uh, taping can be an issue as far as the the athletes are concerned. Here come. Uh, the Trimble Trojans. That's Rocklow. We saw a little bit of slippage there. We got a flag on the play. The ball carrier was a Rocklow. We've seen him in doing the punting duties. We'll have the uh, we'll have the ruling momentarily on uh, the flag holding against the Trojans. The wide receiver I think, put her hands on somebody and, uh, and inhibited him getting the ball carrier. So. That's got to deflate your team when you've got some offensive momentum going and then the flags come out. Yeah, I, I think what Trimble's going to have to do, uh, they're going to have to do it soon. They're just going to have to start throwing the ball. They're going to, they do it, they do it well. Uh, they do it with confidence. They have an O-line that gives their quarterback time. Um, but they're just going to have to decide that that's what's going to get them to where they have to go. We have got a second and 20, or a first down and 20 situation as far as the Trojans are concerned. The ball is back at the 16. So they are deep in their home uh, territory. And uh, we'll want to see something happen. Maybe that patented uh, aerial game will get them out of uh, this difficulty. Now they're keen on, uh, they're keen on Fox this time, but. Too good, looking to the air, airs it out. Good effort there, whoops. That was rather disarming, one might say. <laughs> good way to get 17 yards back in a hurry. Yep, yep, good effort there. Watch the replay. Yeah, you can see it's just a, a, an out by the wide out. And just well thrown ball right to the sidelines. Very safe pass. Very safe pass. Great catch by Boule there. Actually pulled the sleeve off his jersey. <laughs> and so uh, great amount of effort there. Second and three. For Trimble, they're at the 34-yard line of Trimble territory. Too good over his center. Numbers. That is number 24, the ball carrier, straight up the middle. That's Jeff McCarty, and that was good enough for the first down. It'll move the sticks, and uh, wow, two plays. They eat uh, that 24-yard deficit. Ladies and gentlemen, the score, Moncton Purple Knights 7, Harrison Trimble Trojan 0. We have played 12 minutes of football. The first quarter is complete here at Rocky Stone Field. You're watching the 12-man Provincial High School Football Championship here on Rogers TV.
Here we are getting ready to start off the second quarter. Right now it's 7-0 for Moncton High. Moncton High was patient in their, their play calling, talking to the Moncton High coaches for a couple of minutes. He was hoping to get Harrison Trimble to step left, step left, step left, then they came right. They're capitalizing on the fact that Harrison Trimble is being overly aggressive into the backfield and they're letting Mark McDougall to pick his lanes. So far it's worked for them, but we've just seen uh, Harrison Trimble is starting to move the ball a little bit through the air. I think that's what they're going to have to rely on. Back up top to Steve and, and uh, Stu. Thanks for that, Jeff. Uh, 7-0. A couple of words on the first quarter. Stu, your thoughts? Well, it's basically what we thought. We said initially that uh, Mark McDougall is, is a, a stalwart player for the for the Knights, and he carried the ball and uh, and made positive yardage. Here we go. Two good airs and looking for the receiver, Fox. And number three up there, that is Jordan Bernard. He went step for step with Fox and was able to break up the pass. That was a long ball. No, the, the, we said before that Trimble can throw the ball. And the, the only thing on that particular one, you want to keep the ball away. You want to, you don't want to put the ball towards the center of the field because there's too many people can play. So if he can just keep the, get the ball out more to the sideline a little bit, they, they have a better chance at it. But that was a great defensive play. As we said one time before, when the ball's in the air, it's anybody's ball. Whoever makes the play, you know, it's 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 the defense has as much right to it as the offensive player. But the offensive player, you just think it's yours. And here come the Trojans. They are second and ten from their own 42-yard line. Roll out and pass. It is complete to number 88. That's Aaron Hamilton. We've seen Hamilton make a couple of grabs already. And he, that looks like a solid combo for the Trojans. I think they gained about another few yards if they can allow that fumble to stand because he, he, when he came down, he fumbled it and uh, it rolled ahead and one of the Trojans jumped on it. But that pass pattern is an excellent thing, what we were just talking about. He ran into a, what we call a hook zone. He just ran about down 15 yards and curled in and he goes around behind the Mountain High defenders. They can't see him. So he just fits into a gap between two of them and the quarterback, of course, can see it all because he's looking downfield. It's a great play. First and 10 for the Trojans. They're in Moncton High territory right now. They're at the 49 yard line. Too good over his center. Receivers wide to the left, but the give is to 15. But man, oh man, one on one. Uh, uh, that was uh, number 15 Robart with the ball, but, but the defender saw that coming and just wrapped him up for a modest loss on the play. I think he was uh, inhibited by his own his own player, actually, because it, it was a, a, a little bit of a miscue, but luckily for Trojans, there was an offside of Moncton High. Offside against Moncton High. So that'll, uh, that's a freebie, that five yards that they almost didn't get. So we'll see if that keeps up the momentum. For, it is first and five on the basis of the penalty. They're at the 44-yard line of Moncton High. Trimble is putting together uh, their first sustained drive of the ball game. Too good. Now over the ball, looking, keeping under pressure, sack in Trimble territory. Uchimama. That was a broken play. I mean, he turned around and somebody was supposed to be there and they weren't there. And they're having a little discussion about it now. And it, well, you, if you could see that again, you know. Somebody got the smoking finger, I think. <laughs> Because they turned around and there was, uh, whatever happened, whoever was supposed to be where they were, they weren't. We've got a timeout, I do believe. Somebody coming out from, it is a man down for uh, the Purple Knights. The rehydration unit coming out to uh, pass the water bottles. Look at the crowds, too. That's great. And there is the man down. That is number 87. Uh, check that. Uh, you got a good number on that? That is, yep, 97, I'm sorry. 97 for Moncton High. Nagel by name. Saved by a, saved by a name on the jersey there. <laughs> All right. So the Trojans face a second and 15 situation, 16 situation, check that, as they come in. Uh, one thing we haven't talked about, and it's not been a factor today, Stu, is wind. It's been very light breezes. If there's any wind at all, it is just behind the Trojans, but I wouldn't, I would doubt that it's under 5K looks right like, now. Looks like we've got a timeout charged to Trimble now. There's something, something going on. Maybe they didn't have their T's crossed and I's dotted. Yeah, it looks like Two Good's going back to the bench for consult, consult with the coaching staff. 
This is one of the things, I, again, I, I know that uh, anybody that knows me is they're going to get tired. They're going to tell me that I repeated this too much, but it was the fact that they're going, you know, it's, it looks like a passing down, you yeah. know, and, and, and you can almost, like, what type of a pass is it going to be? And, you know, I get a little excited when a situation like this arises. <laughs> right on. Jeff, speaking of excitement, how about down there on the sidelines? You're in close with the crowd right now. I'm in with the crowd, that's right. I decided to come over to this sideline today or for this quarter just to see what the environment was like over here. And I can tell you that just about everybody here has got somebody they're cheering for. It is a very partisan crowd. And we've got the Trimble fans on the Trimble side. We've got the Moncton High on the Moncton High side. And every time anything happens on this field, it's just like thunder down here. The, the crowd is really quite amazing. And when you take a look at the face, we got, we got young, we got old, we got people that have seen these teams play 26 years ago, as a matter of fact. And they're here to see it again. So it's, uh, it's quite an environment down here. Thanks for that, Jeff. And we'll be back to you as the game progresses. Trimble already now back to the ball. Four receivers wide to the right side. And one to the left. There's the snap. Too good wants to go to the air. He reaches up. Oh, yes. That Did he get it? Yes. Heck of a catch. <laughs> over. That is what we talked about. His shoulder tucked by the helmet, Stu. Amazing. That's what we were talking about earlier, Steve. We're going to see some athleticism today, and that is one heck of a catch. Let's I hope. Mean, yeah, let's see if the truck can help us with that one. That's a, that's a keeper for a highlight reel. Here it comes. Now he had load, he, he rockets that thing, puts lots of air under it. That's what we say, get lots of air and let the receiver run under it. But not only just, he catches it four times. There we wow, go. just snug it against the helmet. and Excellent the, catch. The official was right there to see that he had control complete on the pass. Major pickup in yardage. First and 10, they're at the 18-yard line. Can't get anywhere though, only gets modest yards. That's a good effort uh, by the defense against number 24, McCarty. Just a great effort there. And the Trojans are threatening. They are in the red zone right now. They, Second down and nine. They, they've got to come back with the runs. I mean, they have to, they still, they still have to keep the defense on us. I mean, they don't want to just have people pinning their ears back and coming after the quarterback because he needs time to make the passes like we saw in the previous play. Second and nine Trojans. They're at the 18 yard line. Togut rolling out, wants to find a receiver. Airs it up. No, in and out of the hands of Boulay. Boulay was wearing the, tra the Purple Knight Defender like a shirt. Your comments, Stu? Well, I, I know there's nobody feels worse than that gentleman right there because he knows he should have had that. He was up, he excellent position. He boxed the person up, went up to get him, went up to get him, and he just didn't lock it up. You'll see he had both hands in this ball. Excellent position. He gets moves back, boxes out. He just he brought it into his body, slipped down. And you can tell he's in disgust. He pounds the turf. Ouch. Yeah, tough call. Third and nine. And they're going to go for it. Thought they might set for a field goal there, but too good. Looking, wants to try it again. Looking for receivers, has to keep. Under pressure. No, it goes down. It'll turn over on downs. It's another slip. We saw another slip on the field. I'm just curious about the, the, the field, whether something's going on with the temperature or whatever, because I, I see people slipping an awful lot tonight, and that's unusual on this type of turf. Does moisture content have anything to do with it? I, I wonder in terms of, you know, with the cooler temperatures or maybe it's been warm through the day and cooling I mean, as the know, day progresses? Maybe, no, you, know, you might you might get a little bit of condensation on there. You just might. All right. But that's the exciting play. I mean, we got them down, you know, we got them down to the, you know, into the 20-yard yep, line. Think it, I think it's built confidence with the Trojans knowing that they can penetrate into uh, the night red zone. But here come the Knights now. Rogers over the ball, first and 10 at his own 20. That's McDougal, the ball carry. He looks like uh, he's a major part of their ground game. He'll he'll take a big bite out of the first down yardage requirements. Uh, we're talking probably seven yards. Let's wait and see. We've got a finger pointed at someone there. Mouth guard warning. Yeah, mouth guard warning against the against the Purple Knights. Pickup was seven yards by McDougal. Second and three, Stu. They're at the uh, 27. I don't think we're really surprised with who got the ball that time. He's going to be he's going to be the workhorse for the Knights uh, this evening. Purple Knights are second and three. They'd like to get some real estate behind them. Rogers rolls out, has time, airs it, 
It is, oh, just through the fingertips of the receiver and number 80, Travis Joyce. And we've got a flag deep in the backfield. It's either, it's either roughing or be a holding. So what do we have here? Oh, well, first roughing down, roughing the passer. passer. Costly, costly when, you're, when, when your D is uh, exercising pressure on the opponent. That's a stinger. You know, there's a fine line between when, when is late and when is not late, and you want to be aggressive, you teach aggressiveness, and, and it, it, sometimes it's just it's so, so close a call. Any reaction from the benches, Jeff, on that penalty? Not so much on the penalty. I was talking to head coach Mark T. Just asked him briefly why he didn't go for a field goal when he had a chance close to the end zone there. He just felt that the team had marked, marched the ball down quite well. They thought they saw a weakness in the Moncton uh, secondary and decided to go for the touchdown at this point in the game. Uh, he doesn't feel that it was a bad decision on his part, but they do feel they need some more push up on the, uh, the front of the line there. I don't think anybody had a problem with that penalty, though. All right, thanks. Here we go, Rogers decides to keep rolling out. He's under pressure, has to throw it away. And it was uh, incomplete. Great effort there, you. Uh... I, I don't know what to watch. I'm, yep. I'm watching the blocks in the backfield. And yep. Actually, somebody got, uh, number 33 from Trimble actually got, somebody grabbed him. I'm surprised he didn't got a holding call on that one. They grabbed, right hold of spun him right around. That was a heck of an almost catch. Yep. And I mean, just there's so much going on in the field that it, it, it's hard to narrow in on one thing in particular. Yeah, we got to we got to ask you as a as a career receiver when when that decision moment when you decide to throw your body and just go for broke as a receiver. We saw Ad do that as he went body surfing into the sidelines. I uh, just want to be a hero. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he just want to be a hero. There you go. Great great effort though. Sacrifice sacrifice the bod for the team. Third down for the Purple Knights. They're going to have about uh, five yards to go. Third and five. So they'll want to kick it away, one would assume. The ever dangerous Steve Fox, number 81, will be the deep man for Trimble. We've got 6-10 remaining in the second quarter. Moncton High 7, Harrison Trimble no score. Had to do it quickly. Fox takes it on the run, breaks the tackle. Here he comes, one on one. That is McDougal on special teams. You want to know he's fired up? Yeah, he's a player. He certainly, uh, uh, he certainly lets people know he's in the game, and he tries to fire up the crowd, turns to the crowd, and uh, acknowledges their support and cheering for him. And, and, I, and like I say, he's he's. We said this, but third time we said this. He's 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 going to be the key, I believe, to Moncton High winning this game if they win it because they're going to. As he goes offensively, I do believe he's the, he's the he's the common factor in that Moncton High offense. Here come the Trojans. They're coming back to a first and ten situation at their own 42-yard line. They'd like to muster a drive here and see if they can threaten. Ball carrier number eight, a new ball carrier back there. That is Colin, check that, that is Matt Seeley for the Trojans. A little bit of misdirection, a little bit of slot around, we'd call that. A little misdirection, just trying to, you know, keep the Moncton High defense off a little bit. And, and looking and trying to find your own. And we know that Trimble can throw the ball. They're, they've got to uh, settle in, you know, and give confidence to their offensive line to, to move people out of the way so they can uh, have one complement the pass game, complement the run, and vice versa. Four yards on the pickup, second and six for the Trojans. They are at their own 46 yard line. Too good over his snap now. Rolling out on the keeper. Have a flag on the play already. Too good. Spins, twirls. Probably picked up about four or five yards, but we'll see what's the it look is holding against the Trojans. So it would be an interesting call. Now, if they if Moncton High declines this, it'd be third down there, and you'd think the Trimble would punt, but they'd probably probably send them back and make it sec down, second down. Okay, it'll be second and 15. And here we are again, just the point where I like it to be, Steve. Yep, ball it's, back. It's, it's, it's second and long. You know they're going to throw the ball, and uh, you wonder who they're going to go to. They're back at the 36-yard line. Let's watch that uh, two-good Fox combo. 446. I think they announced the, did they announce the attendance there? Did we just announce the attendance, guys? 5100? 
Awesome. 5,100 fans paid admission, so that, that is awesome. Well, Trimble, it, uh, on the, uh, they just ran a little bit in by the wide receiver, and he threw the ball on a rope, and it was just a little bit over. Uh, we had uh, uh, two, uh, Fox going down the, the, the seam, the number two receiver straight down the hash marks, trying to clear out anybody for his wide receiver coming in, running a little bit of an in route, and it was just over the top, but the quarterback threw it on a rope, so he's, as we know, he's not afraid to throw. Right on. So it's got to be exciting for high school football officials, minor football officials, and just the city of Moncton in generally. Over 5,000 fans here this afternoon. Rothko coming down to number three of the Purple Knights. That is Jordan Badar. He goes out of bounds. Just, to, no, still in motion. Jeff, you are front row on that play. Give us your impression. Up over the 50s, and Harrison Kirk will bring it down. Yep. All right. Jeff, I'm not sure if you heard our request. You were, you were a frontline witness to that play. Your perceptions? I was right here, standing right in front of the run, and he stayed in bounds that whole way. That was a great call by the referee. And right now, Moncton High is just pumped for that uh, return that they had. Those last two pass plays that Moncton High threw up there, I asked Robbie Weir, the offensive coordinator, why go to the air all of a sudden? And he said, quite honestly, there were broken plays or audibles at the line that some people didn't hear about. There were supposed to be run plays, and Rogers had to make a decision at the last minute to actually put the ball in the air. So they're hoping to get back to the ground game, I think, right now. Thank you very much. Okay, here comes Rogers back with the line with his charges. They are at the 47-yard line of Moncton High. There's the give to McDougal. McDougal threads, finds room. Man, carries two tacklers with him, but still manages the yards after. Well, the game is played from the waist down. I said before, a little lower, but the game's, and they're, hop, they're hopping on his back, and the way that kid wants to run today, he's gonna bring a, a few along for the ride for three or four extra yards, so the going to Trimble's gonna have to hit him lower. Commit yourself to the ground, so to speak, you know, and it's uh, a lot of times people just wanna stay in their feet and make the tackle. Sometimes you just have to commit your body to the ground to make a tackle. McDougal picked up six yards, four of them with two white backpacks, but here come the Purple Knights. There's McDougal stretching it out down the right side. He is past the 20. He is inside the 15. He is driven out of bounds. We'll watch the mark for you. They are at the 10 yard line. This is the Mark McDougal Purple Knights. Great, great support from his team, but he's doing a great job too. Watch they gained it. The edge by, they gained the edge by some good blocking. Good blocking up here. They sealed some people and they committed inside. He just used some speed and uh, the, the wide receiver is blocking downfield. That's what we like to see. So as a wide receiver yourself, how, uh, what's it feel like to get, get in licks for your, your, your buds uh, as an offensive play gels? We don't get a chance to hit very much. A lot of times it, it is nice because it's best when they don't see you coming because when you're small, you got to be that way. McDougal on the left side looking, has some room, evades tacklers, he's inside the five. Now that was an example of, I know that, that uh, uh, in that particular play that we're, uh, Chris Lamont, that was his only chance to get McDougal, but he got him from the knees down. And if you tackle people from the knees down, no matter how big they are or quick they are, if you can get a fix on them, they're going to go down. Okay, I think, I think Moncton High can, just by inches, can still get a first down without scoring a TD, but the ball is just, uh, just at the five. It is second and five with just a ball length beyond that to the goal line. So let's see how the Trimble D holds up in the, in the late going here. McDougal the fake. Look at that, nobody there. Touchdown, Purple Knights. Uh, everybody, that's Dickinson going in from six yards out. Not a little slot around, that's right. All the flow goes towards the middle of the field. A little slot around, a little bit of delay. I wonder if we can see that from the truck on replay. And we'll have a good view of this in the camera. And you'll see that he had, Dickinson had at an angle on that corner. When you see him around, he knows, right? When you see it now, he's got that corner of the end zone. Nothing's going to stop him. Great, great coverage. Thanks yeah. to the crew of Rogers TV bringing that to you. What a great view. Snap, boot, it is good, the convert is good. That came from six yards out by uh, Lucas, Luke Dickinson, and a little bit of an exclamation point on that last offensive series for the Purple Knights. Thoughts, Stu Fraser. 
Well, we, we, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. We said as, as Matt McDougal runs, uh, he gets him down, gets him down the field, uh, 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 doing some, uh, Mark McDougal, sorry, uh, moving them down the field. He's dependable. He runs hard. Uh, Trimble is going to have to stop. They're going to have to stop that run. They get them, they, they've got to put them in second and long. If it's going to be second and short the whole time, it's going to be a long evening for the Trojans. Interesting. Jeff, uh, how was the reaction from the Purple Knight bench to that uh, second TD? Oh, the Moncton High Purple Bench, the Purple Knight bench, they're going crazy over here. They're, they're really excited about how the game plan is coming together. Uh, running the ball, using McDougal the best way that they can and setting him up to set that uh, reverse up is, was uh, in the playbook all the way along and uh, they're pretty excited about it. Uh, Trimble, on the other hand, they're, they're a little frustrated, a little bit of breakdown and uh, they're hoping that they can regroup and uh, start to shut them down after their offense goes out and scores some points. Thank you very much, McCarty. Only one man back, McCarty going, going, down the hash marks. He is going to score a touchdown, McCarty, all the way. He ran the field. Well, we're on the uh, we're on the Trimble side of the stands and I can feel the vibration now because they're all jumping up and down and, you know, I think that's why we like being around a game like this because, I mean, just when you think it was gonna go one way, oh, he jumps and goes back the other way. Look at this, I mean, that's a good effort. That's it, and you wouldn't have thought it at the beginning. It looks like he comes in, he's not running hard, just just easy, easy, easy. Sees a hole, and away he goes. Away he goes. 90 yards on the return. Excellent, excellent, excellent run. And when they needed it, he answered. 90 yards. It. And we're set for Rothgau on the TD. There's the set, the boot, it's up, it's good. So, number 24, that's Jeff McCarty, 90 yards on the kickoff return. Plays hero for the Trojans, and uh, they've closed the gap to seven. That was, a, that happened, Jeff, you have to agree, I think, that happened at a crucial part of this football game right now. I'm not, Jeff, did you pick that up? Uh, that, that's got to be a, got to be a game, a, a game saver at least. To oh. keep the Trimble Trojans in this one. Oh yeah, going into the going into the half. If nothing else happens now in the next two minutes and five seconds, 14-7 is a whole lot better than going in 14 nothing. That's for sure. Uh, the Trojans are up. They're on their feet now. They're excited. Uh, they know that they can score. They know they can run with these guys. And uh, I think uh, just as I said what I said about them scoring some points and getting out there and standing tough. Now's a chance for the defense to show what they got going into halftime. Thank you for that, Jeff. And. Uh... Speaking of halftime, Jeff will be back with you, ladies and gentlemen, with some halftime features. So we hope that you'll stay with Rogers TV for our halftime package. You're, yours truly, Steve Ridlington, along with Stu Fraser, is color commentator this afternoon. I'm on Play by Play. Jeff Reith is your sideline host. And a tip of the hat to the men and women of Rogers TV crew who are helping bring this 12-man championship to you. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you enjoy it. Uh, that is a number eight of the Purple Knight, number nine at least of the Purple Knights. That is Luke Dickinson. He's got one of the majors for the Purple Knights and he gives them excellent ball position on that return. They'll be first and 10 at the 40s, Do Well, uh, this this point in the game, uh, Steve, you know, you got just under two minutes remaining. They use the clock wisely. These have a timeout left. I mean, both teams have going to have a chance to put points on the board in this remaining two minutes. It, they, that's what you have to enjoy about Canadian football is they can use the clock. It's not, in, in American football, there's four plays left. I mean, bar, you know, some timeouts and whatnot, but there's so much time left in the game if it's used wisely for both teams. If you're just joining us, ladies and gentlemen, here on Rogers TV, the score, Moncton High Purple Knights 14, Harrison Trimble Trojans 7, Rogers rolling out under pressure. Man, he can scramble. Look at him go. And he gets a block. He wants to go for a run. He is going to run out of bounds at the 35. He picked up their 15. He picked up four 35 yards, I believe. 35 yards, what a scrambler. Well, that was, he, I, I don't know if he had anything else in mind, but he was just gonna run it. He, he found, went one way and broke it back and just, he, again, eye the markers. When you're running outside, you eye the first down marker, set your sights ahead of it and go for all you're with. But he, he made it an excellent play. Mm -hmm. Something out of nothing, as we say, Stu Fraser on that play. 
There he goes to give us to McDougal. McDougal breaks a tackle. He breaks another tackle. He's on his way inside, carries the tacklers. It takes six Trojans to bring him down. They are inside the 20. First down for the Purple Knights. As Jeff had said earlier, Jeff uh, on the sideline, he said, this is the time for the, the, the Trimble. The defense has got to step up. There's, there's two missed tackles. There's two missed tackles. And we said earlier, get them low, but you've you, you got to get them. He, they are first and 10 at the 18 now. We will try. Uh, here's, let's watch. Whoop, we got a replay here. We had a replay. Thank you for that. Just a great effort by McDougal, as you saw on that replay. The Trimble Trojans have come for a timeout. I'm not sure if we have a statistician up here in the booth, but I'll try my best at the halftime to get some, some numbers on McDougal. He must be having a career day, one would estimate. Well, he's going to be a tired young man. I hope his, uh, his conditioning level is good because Moncton High needs him the entire uh, you know, 48 minutes of this game. And, and uh, he, like I said before, he is a key to, to, to moving this. He's, he's a solid player. I don't know, Jeff, uh, can you pick up anything from the defensive huddle there? Yeah, uh, head coach Mark Teed is trying to fire his guys up. He's telling them to stop watching the play, to get involved, to play your position, but don't just let things happen in front of you, to fly around a little bit out there and make put your helmet on a player. So they're trying to fire him up. I mean, obviously, we got a minute 35 here. Uh, Moncton is in a bit of a, a terror rate right at the moment, and so uh, they're trying to fire them up. But so is the crowd behind here, and uh, we got quite a few of the guys wearing the old jackets asking to play, to be honest. <laughs> All right, thanks for that, Jeff. And I'm sure, uh, Stu, a few buds over there. Oh, yeah. A few yes. buds of different kinds over there, I would say, too. <laughs> All right. All right, one of the statisticians just informed me that uh, we'll see the play there. McDougal is already at 120 yards rushing. So he is having a career, he is having a career game. Those numbers are good. I, I, I wouldn't say they're unexpected because we knew that he was going to have to, uh, he was going to have to run to, to keep Monk's eye moving. That last play was just an excellent uh, by uh, Dylan Rogers. He's just an athlete. He, he was flushed outside and he was going to take a loss and just as quickly as he could just dished off. Even, you know, he might have got back to the line of scrimmage, but he was going to take a five-yard loss and he just dished off towards the nearest receiver. So there's a lot of athleticism on this field this evening. Yeah, he's picked up a... Uh picked up one yard and ladies and gentlemen will tell you that's not thunder over rocky stone field that's uh, that's the uh, that's about uh, 20 per that's about 40 percent of the 5,000 people banging on the aluminum flooring on the grandstand so just want to reassure you i uh, i hope the stand is well constructed uh, well it's new Stu fraser <laughs> all right <laughs> well, that means sure. anything that's for sure all right we have 128 that's left a great in crowd the, in the first half and uh, Purple Knights are in the red zone. They're first and 10 at the 17. Has time to McDougal the pass. McDougal runs inside the 10 yard line to the seven. It should move the stick, Stu Fraser. Yeah, that was just a bit of a, well, I don't know if you'd call it an edge screen or a center screen. What they, they rolled all towards us, all towards the, the bleacher side, and then they just dished back as they entice the Trimble defense to come towards them. They just dump it over the heads, and we have what we call just a little bit of a center screen or just an outside screen. Okay, the Zebra Patrol has asked for the chain gang, so they'll, they'll come out and measure. It's going to be close. This, this is critical measurement. I'm, I often wonder, you know, you always hear commentators and players and fans of football talking about ball placement. And that's on a play like this, it's really crucial. It is, especially when there, there's, there's a pile up inside and everybody thinks, you know, just, you know, two or three inches make the difference. But you, it looks like they've got it. So first down, Purple Knights, you can see our our on the spot camera crew has great camera placement for you there. And you can see that it was easily uh, more than a ball length. So. They are threatening. Uh, we could, uh, the Purple Knights could reestablish that two major, two TD difference. We'll see if they can bring it together. Rogers over his center. McDougal in the background. There's the give to McDougal. McDougal runs. Touchdown, yeah. McDougal. Looks like a walk in the park. Yeah. Let's see if we can get. Guys will get the replay up for us. I hope we'll have a peek. Well, that Moncton, Moncton High offensive line is coached by Terry Tate. He's just, he's been around more than any other offensive coach, offensive line coach I know of, and he's just doing a great job. Look at this surge. They're all pushing. They're all stepped to the left. They pushed and got a hand on somebody white, and away they go. 
No, that's 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 a credit to the coaching of Terry Tate's offensive line. And McDougal there, the there's the fanhood from the Purple Knights. They are quite happy about that progress. And Moncton High now leads it 21 to 7 on the converted touchdown. And that uh, Mark McDougal seven yard run uh, came at the 12, or check that, the 10 51 mark. Now we know what Trimble did before. I, I, it would be unlikely that it would happen again. I, I can see that. Well, I would say maybe Moncton High will just kind of. Not squib kick it, but a line drive it down the field so it'll bounce around and spend some time in the turf before it's scooped up. But there are the cheerleaders from Harrison Trimble. They're trying to inspire their uh, favorite football team. That's to a great crowd. Do a number. I, what can you say, Stu? You were, you were talking about uh, these two games today, uh, giving a shot in the arm to minor football in this province. Uh, we've got over 5,000 people. Look, look at the crowd yeah, there at home. Beautiful. Over 5,000 yeah. fans are here at Rocky Stone today. Flags down on the play. No, no yards maybe? Ball went out of bounds. Ball, Ball went out of, out of bounds. So they can take it there. They can move them back five yards, have them re-kick it. Um, it looks like the offense is coming in the field. So they're going to, and you know what? They've got a minute and nine seconds. And they've got, uh, well, no timeouts. But they throw the ball. They throw the ball and get out of bounds. They've, they've got a chance to move down the field. Here's surely Steve Riddlington handling the play-by-play -play today. Stu Fraser is our color commentator. Jeff Reith is our sidelines host. And a tip of the football helmet to the good men and women of the Rogers TV crew for helping us bring this game to you across the width and breadth of New Brunswick. You're watching the 12-man high school football championship from Rocky Stone Field in Moncton. The Harrison Trimble Trojans trail the Moncton High Purple Knights by a score of 21 Seven. We're just a minute and nine away from halftime. Uh, please stay with Rogers TV for our halftime uh, package, uh, interviews, and other information. Uh, we're, sh we're sure you'll enjoy it. Shotgun formation for the Trojans. Receivers are wide right. Fox is in motion on the right side. Too good looking. Airs it up. And oh, in traffic, it looked like there might have been, number 89 was the intended receiver, that's Boulay, but looked like either of the uh, coverage men for the Purple Knights might have had an interception opportunity there. Yeah, he was, uh, he look, he was looking on a, a, random, a bit of a post corner again, looking over his right shoulder, but then turned, uh, the, the, uh, Boulay that is, had to turn and look at was inside, and the free safety for Moncton High, uh, or strong side safety, came across really hard and did have a chance to make a play on that. I'm almost thinking that the wide side of the field being to the right, they're going to isolate number 88 down here and see if they can get something to have a throwback. Too good is in behind, looking, looking, airs it in and out of the hands of number four, Rocklow, the intended receiver. Uh, the defender in the backfield of the um, Purple Knight defense thought he might have had a crack on it, but couldn't close on the gap either, so incomplete. Third down and ten. They they looked a little rushed on that. I know they're you know they were you know trying to march down the field uh, with the time, but uh, uh, they they seemed a little bit rushed in that because normally Trimble executes that that style of that type of play very well. We've got just under a minute to go. Fifty nine point three. Look at the fans. That is the standing room crowd here. The uh, fifteen hundred capacity grandstand is chock a block full. Gets a quick and hurried boot up, and it sails out of bounds at the 28-yard line. So uh, under pressure, that was not a bad kick as far as uh, field placement. That was something Harrison Trimble needed at this particular time because there's still lots of time on the clock. A flag on the far side. We'll wait and see. Illegal procedure against the Trojans. So... Does that mean they kick over? Or? Well, that's Moncton High's choice, and by the, by the, I would certainly want them to kick again if I was Moncton High, because that was a heck of a kick with no return, and it put them down at what inside their own 35-yard line. I would say I want them uh, to kick again, but we'll have to see what. Uh, I think they're going to do that. Yep. Rothglow is uh, Rothglow is out there, the, the, the punter. Rothglow, at least. Sorry about that. 53.6 seconds left. 
Jeff, any ideas on the sermon for halftime uh, from Trimble head coach? I think what you're going to probably see is that they're going to be uh, trying to light the fire under them to get them uh, to start playing Trojan football like they have the last four weeks, not like they've shown so far today. I think that they've got to start playing their assignments a little bit more in defense, and they're going to, he's going to be talking about uh, staying in your lanes and making a play happen. This comes down to too good. He's in the clear, got, uh, got some great blocking. Too good running at speed. Not too many people around him. Too good could go all the way, and he does. Touchdown, Purple Knights. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That was a good decision to have him kick again, I'd say. <laughs> They read, they, they, they read your suggestion, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, one uh, cardinal sin on uh, uh, anytime you're covering a punt, you cannot let anybody get inside. You must stay out to the sideline, force the uh, returner back into the middle, and you can see that somebody got hooked or something. Not not illegal necessarily, but you've got a wide note. They've got a fan out, Trimble does. You've got a wide note, wide note. Here's our mistake, right here in the middle of the field. You've got to be outside, so force that person to go back in. And they, they lost contain. And once you lose contain, and there you're being escorted to the end zone with your buddies. He went 75 yards. 75 yards on the punt return. Convert is good. 28-7. We talked about we talked about the Trojans narrowing the gap, but uh, the Purple Knights have wi widened the gap by two converted touchdowns. No, that was it. There's a few plays there that I'm sure that uh, the Trojans wish they had back, but. Uh, kudos to Monkton High. They came, and, and that was uh, all facets of the game are, are doing well. Return team and defense playing well. Defensive backs are playing well. They had to play well against the Trimble passing team. Um, uh, McDougal, of course, is running well, and, and Dylan Rogers and the offensive line. They're making things happen. They're playing well as a team. Trimble it seems used to be off their, you know, uh, off their nuts, so to speak. They're just, you know, they're just not, not quite firing. But when you have an explosive passing game like Trimble. This, a 21-point uh, deficit is not insurmountable. It can, but they just can't get scored again as easily as they have been. The defense second half has got to come out and start stopping people. But what's interesting is you've had... Well... And uh, interesting, interesting play right there. We, but I was just going to say that, uh, you know, you've got a special teams TD for the Purple Knights. You've got offensive TDs. Uh, they're showing the full package this afternoon. Well, they just had, they, uh, we call this a little bit of a pooch kick, where you just hit the top of the ball, line it straight down. And ideally, you know, what you want to do is, is, is put it at one of the, the, the linemen you have facing you, because linemen aren't traditionally have, you know, they'd be receivers if they're running backs, if they had, they had great hands. But what happens is just bounced off one of the uh, Trimble uh, up front guys and right back to the Knights, and they get another chance. 33 seconds left. And the pass is complete. Complete to number 80, Travis Joyce. Starting to be an offensive playbook. Uh, a little bit of a training manual right here. Well, it just seems like they only need really about two and a half minutes in a game <laughs> because they've scored a lot of points in the last little bit. And uh, the Trimble, Trimble defense will want to stiffen here. A little bit of change of personnel. He just launched one down the sideline. Good, good move by the receiver. Can back up the ball. It was a good job. Trojans, or at least the Purple Knights, the, on the keeper, there's the pass, complete touchdown, Purple Knights, 24-yard pass completion, that's to number seven, check that, it was number seven, yes indeed. Well, I bet Trimble would like to have about three minutes left <laughs> back uh, if they could go back in time a bit. But again, all tribute to Monkton High. They're, they're riding the wave right now, and they are riding it to the fullest amount. And you can, convert is good. Uh, that, that to uh, Sahim Zaid uh, was the... Oh, scored the, t the major for the Purple Knights, so they're spreading it around the, the offense. Uh, that brings the score to 35-7. And uh, we talked about a uh, three, uh, three uh, converted touchdown gap being not insurmountable, but uh, 28 points, uh, a little bit of uh, extra insurance there. Jeff, are you there? 
Say that again? I, I say, wasn't it just a few minutes ago we were talking about going into halftime 14-7 was easier to handle than 14 nothing. And what's happened in the last couple of minutes? Oh, yeah, and there was less than three minutes left in the clock when we had that conversation. I think that uh, Trimble would just like to get their offense on the field and keep them on the field for more than just a couple of plays. Their defense is worn right out right at the moment. And they'll try it again. No, not going to happen this time as number 21 of the Trojans, Baldwin, covers up on the ball, almost pulled it off again. Well, we're going to see if um, uh, Too Good has uh, an arm right now, I'd have to say, because I, my, my suggestion, he's going to launch a couple uh, rockets here. Let's watch there. There's the pooch again. Up. Very close, not, not far off the mark. If you're just joining us, uh, ladies and gentlemen, here on Rogers TV across the province of New Brunswick, less than three minutes ago, the score was 14-7. And Moncton High has just put on an offensive training film for uh, the Trimble defense here. Under pressure, too good. Oh, my. Sack. A loss of... Uh, a loss of about eight or nine yards on the play. And a statistician just informed me, Stu, that was uh, three converted touchdowns in 58 seconds. Well, that's got to be a little bit of a record for a championship. It has to be. And uh, clock is running. I think they're just going to take a knee and get out of this and go back and regroup and... Well, ladies and gentlemen, there's the referee signal. The first half of the 2009-12 man provincial high school football championship game is history. The score, Moncton High Purple Knights 35, Harrison Trimble Trojans 7. You're watching this game from uh, Rocky Stone Field in Moncton between Moncton High and Purple, Moncton High Purple Knights and Harrison Trimble Trojans. The game coming to you on Rogers TV. I've got Steve Fox here with me from the Harrison Trimble Trojans, number 81, one of their big threats for passing, as we talked about in the pregame. Steve, so far today, 35-7, it hasn't quite gone the way that you guys had hoped. What do you expect you have to do in the second half? I think we have to uh, open up uh, our passing game with some runs and uh, start making some open field tackles and um, just start playing harder because this is not championship effort right now. This is 
this is not how we have to get it done. What do you expect the coach is going to be saying to you at halftime here? We have to pick it up. It's the championship. It's the last game of the year. Just go all out. We have to start making sure we get our blocks and wrap people up because that's how they're they're getting their touchdowns. If they're getting their major yards. They're breaking tackles. So that's what it Okay. I'll let you get back to the, the locker room so you can regroup for the second half. We look for uh, some explosive play out of you in the second half. Steve, good luck. Thanks. All right, take care. I was Steve Fox with uh, the Harrison Trimble Trojans, and I'm going to be talking now with uh, Moncton High, number 17. Uh, right now, they're up 35 7. He's just coming over to join me right here, right now. Dylan, how are you? Not bad, yeah. Good. This is Dylan Rogers, quarterback of, uh, of the uh, Moncton High Purple Knights. Uh, nice, impressive score right now, 35-7. You guys certainly took it to them, especially the last three minutes of the first half. Uh, the coaches looked like they were trying to set up the run game earlier, but uh, now we seem to have gone to the pass a little bit. Uh, how has it uh, changed for you as the game has progressed? Uh, I think the only reason why I went to the pass at the end is because you got to control the clock. But we got great coaches. I think we have the best coaching staff in the league, and they know I have complete trust in what they're going to do. And, We've been running all over them, and now they have to, the defense has to adjust to our run, so we're going to pass on them, I guess. Did you expect to be 35-7 at halftime? No, I don't think anyone could expect that, but we still got another half to play. We're not done. How's it, how hard is it going to be to stay focused going into the second half? This is a big lead in high school football, especially the way that the, this year has gone. I think that's one of the biggest leads we've seen in a, in a game all season long. How hard is it going to be to keep the younger guys focused? Uh, we got a really veteran team, and uh, just got to stay focused, keep doing what we've been doing all year make our blocks, make our runs, make our passes, and I think we'll be good. That's great. Good luck in the second half, Dylan, right. and uh, have a good game. Thank you. That was Dylan Rogers, quarterback, the Moncton High School uh, Purple Knights. Earlier today, before the game started, we talked to both coaches, Mark Teed of the, the Trimble Trojans, and as well as John Alnack of the Moncton High Purple Knights, and here's what they had to say before the game. I'm here with John Alnack, head coach of the Moncton High Purple Knights, and uh, we're looking at a, quite a tilt here today, aren't we, John? It's going to be a great game. So 3-1-2, one, and two, regular season you. record. Two ties against Riviera High, uh, a loss uh, earlier in the season, but a nice uh, run through the playoffs. What have you done over the last couple of weeks to get, keep the guys uh, centered on what they have to do today? Well, basically, when we're away from practice, we get them doing their schoolwork, focused on getting their midterms cleaned up, and just being student athletes, just being very balanced to our approach here uh, for, obviously, uh, the final game of the year. That's it. So it's like a storybook game here. First time in 26 years we've seen these two teams. I mean, they used to be perennial powerhouses, banging each other all the time for years up until the mid-80s. We haven't seen uh, the two of them come together like this uh, since then. Is that uh, played into the uh, what's going on in the school? Are a lot of guys talking about that? No. Uh, we're going to we're gonna let them know what they were part of after. We've really just focused on uh, the things that we can control, and that's our effort at practice and our effort in our game today. So we haven't really um, set the stage for any emotional uh, uh, overkill for our players. They're just going to come out here and just try and get comfortable in the first few minutes of the game on either side of the ball, and that's it. Excellent. Good luck today, John. Thanks. Big game for you, and uh, maybe we'll talk to you at the end of the game. Appreciate it. All right. I'm here with Mark Teed, head coach of the Harrison Trimble Trojans, and uh, here we are at the provincial championships, two and four in the regular season. A lot of people uh, probably counted you guys out at the regu at the end of the regular season. What did you say to the team going into playoffs that uh, made them rise to the the occasion? Uh, it was it was really after homecoming. We suffered a, a tough loss, 13-12 to Moncton High here on homecoming night. Uh, you know, the Moncton High came back in the fourth quarter, and as a team, we just kind of regrouped after that game and said we either you know went out, changed our philosophy, and played some good football, or, or you know our season could come. To an early end so uh, it's a credit to the guys they kept working harder and harder every week and uh, got the offense rolling the defense has been there for us all season so we're here now and ready to go Steve Fox has really turned into quite a clutch player for you guys, winning touchdown in the McNaughton game to put you guys into the semis, uh, and some key plays also in the semis to get you here. Uh, what has Steve contributed off the field that's really led the team? Because I hear he's quite a leader off the field too. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Steve's just a great, uh, he's a good student athlete, he's a good student in school, and I mean, the guys look up to him. He's one of our grade 12 leaders, he's been a captain for us here this year, and uh, it's, it's his work ethic. He leads by example, the guys see the way he works in practice, and they and they raise their game to the same level. So, I mean, it's been a huge leader for us, but there's been a complete team effort too. But Steve's definitely uh, taken the lead role on that. 
So we're looking at what, a defensive game today or an offensive game? <laughs> I don't know. I guess the defenses will have to decide. I mean, uh, we're, you know, we're confident on both sides of the ball. We feel our defense has been strong all year long, and they've kept us in a lot of games and uh, given us the opportunity to win some games. And uh, the offense has really been uh, clicking for us through the playoffs. So, I mean, we're going to go out there with a pretty balanced attack with, uh, with a lot of belief in the guys, and we're going to see what happens. It's going to be a good game, and uh, Moncton High is ready, and we're ready. So we'll see what happens in four quarters. Excellent. One for the ages, first time in 26 years. Good luck in the championship today. Thank Thanks, Mark. Much. Welcome back. We're still at halftime between the uh, Moncton High Purple Knights and the Harrison Trimble Trojans. Right now I've got with me Peter Corby, the Executive Director of New Brunswick Interscholastic Athletic Association, better known as the NBIAA. Peter, here we are. It's 12-man football today and uh, the crowd is fantastic. What's this mean for sports in general, having this many people out? This is one of our best showcases, Jeff. Uh, it, we have, really. We have a couple that are, uh, draw great crowds. This is definitely becoming one of the top, if not the top now. Uh, with our basketball at the Aiken Center and with this facility is unbelievable. Uh, the city of Moncton, we can't say so much more about them than we have already. We'll say again, thank you. Uh, we hope to be here for three more years. Uh, it's a first class uh, facility finished up now. Uh, a few more bleachers. We got about 5,000 roughly here tonight for this game between two close rivalries. I think the second half hopefully will be a little closer and we'll have an excellent final. Ten-man football played earlier today. And they had their championship, and uh, Sussex won that second year in the league. What are the what are the expectations going forward to next year for ten-man football? Well, ten-man, as you may know, we have a rule that says we need eight teams in any sport in the province in a sport for, for us to sanction it and carry it on. That's why we had ten-man for a while, and we dropped it because we only had six schools playing ten-man. Now we're up to eight. Uh, now we, this year we had eight schools. Now we hope we hope. Uh, to carry it on next year with, with 10 schools, uh, with 10 men with eight schools. Hopefully we don't have schools drop out and want to go from back to 12. Uh, we can maintain uh, eight in it. So that's our hope. We won't know that, though, until next May. Right now in the East, we've got two teams from the East playing here in the championship. Uh, the West didn't make, a, make it to the championship this year. Is there any discussion about maybe switching up the playoff format to guarantee an East and a West? It used to be that way back in the 90s. You had an East representative and a West representative. Any idea going back to that? I, I don't think so. It could have been two West teams here today, the crossover. And the chances are to get in the crossover. They, they, you know, they were on the road. Uh, St. John High were home. They lost at home. Frank and Hire on the road. Both of those uh, Southwest teams had had the chance to be here. I think it's we're trying to get the two best teams in the in the province in the final and 
but we have we have some we have some big wins. Four beating one twice uh, in two leagues uh, or two divisions uh, was uh, is amazing. Really, it doesn't happen too often in high school sports. Four beats one. No, that's absolutely right. And we didn't have any undefeated teams this year in the 12-man uh, division. Uh, we had uh, people beating coming up from the lower lower echelons to, to upset the upper echelons. I think it bodes well for the overall uh, level of play in the province. Would you agree? Oh, no question about it. And the enthusiasm that football has brought maybe to Sussex and, and St. Stephen, who are really probably basketball schools in their time, now are football schools. And I give credit to their minor programs and their coaching and how they brought their program along. The more we have, I mean, 10 men is great. As you know, in Saskatchewan, they're playing eight man and, and they got even six man out there. In our province, we haven't got the culture to have the minor programs in the small towns and cities. Uh, we're probably more hockey oriented that way than we are football. It's coming. Uh, hopefully, it's a great game. And, uh, and I think hopefully we can get maybe less than 10 man and get more football playing. Sometimes we uh, in Canada don't want to modify our rules too much. And you got to modify the rules to get more kids playing. So you have more schools playing football if we went below 10 man. No, that's a good point. Peter, we appreciate your time today. Some good insight into going forward. Uh, look forward to a second half, maybe a little closer, hopefully, and, and see this come down to the wire. But thanks for your time today, Peter. Thanks very much, Jeff. That's Peter Corby, the executive director with the MBIAA. Now we're going to uh, move right over to Frazier, uh, Stu Frazier. Stuart? Stu Frazier's been up in the booth for the first half of the game. Uh, Stuart? You and uh, Steve were up top watching the game from bird's eye view. What did you see in the first quarter that was different in the second quarter? What, what really blew this game open in your mind? Well, I mean, we know that uh, McDougal's going to run the ball and ball control, and Monk and I did it. And, uh, and they, just, they, they just ran the ball consistently. Terry Tate's got the offensive line moving, pushing people out of the way, pushing people back, controlling the line of scrimmage. And then it was just a series of, what was it, 53, 55 seconds, 21 points. It was a 14-7 game. We thought, you and I spoke. Going in, it was going to be, okay, 14-7, and then the wheels fell off. And, and, and the game of football, it just happens like that. I mean, can it happen the other way around? Who knows? But what we're going to see is Air Trimble. I mean, if they've got it in them, it's going to have to happen. And I was talking to Steve Fox uh, just as before he went into the change room there at halftime, and he pretty much said the same thing. They've got to get their passing game under control, and they've got to complete some of those passes. The balls are there. The, the, the routes are there. The receivers are there. They're just not quite capitalizing like they have in games past. What do you think, perhaps, is it nerves a little bit? The underdog coming up, is, is it a little bit too nervous for them? Um, I, I know that when you looked at how the season progressed for the Trojans and Moncton High, and, and this is Moncton High, you know, you alluded to it in the very beginning. This is a year that they've been planning for. This is a year they've been planning for. And then near the end of the, you know, they slowed down a bit. Trimble came on. Trimble knocked off the number one team. They, they did things, and uh, they're riding the wave. But is this a, back to reality now or how it should be? Or did we just see those 53 seconds, you know, the 21 points, and now it, it can turn around and Trimble can do the same thing? I, I don't know but I, I, I'm looking forward to an exciting second half. Now, I know that Trimble had a tough time keeping their offense on the field there, and the, even the last five minutes of the first half, they seemed to give up the ball real quickly, and then they gave up a couple of those touchdowns. Their defense was on there a lot. Their offense wasn't on there. Um, so that, that obviously disrupts the, the flow a little bit. If they're going to go to the passing attack, do we run the risk of their defense coming on again real quick? Is that a risk that you think that they have to go to at this point? Well, it's a risk. I mean, the, they advance the ball most when they threw the ball. All right, they advanced it. So are they going to do that? And is, is Trimble going to start wrapping up? I mean, we saw that, you know, we saw there was just a, a line of, McDougal would leave a line of people grasping at him. They, you know, they're in position. And I saw a lot of people just, you know, grabbing up. I, we know how you have to play football. It's from the waist down. And the low man will win. So the defense has got to stop him. The offense has got to put quick points on the board, and they're going to do it in the air. So if that happens, we could have a ball game. Well, let's hope we have a good second half out of both teams. Like to see the score get a little bit closer. Stay tuned. We'll be back after these messages with the second half. Thanks.
Welcome back to the second half of the 2009 12-man football championship between Harrison Trimble Trojans and the Moncton High Purple Knights. The last three minutes of the first half were explosive for the Moncton High Purple Knights, 35-7. Prior to that, it was 14-7. Looked like Trimble was starting to get back into it, but the wheels fell off the bus, as Stu had mentioned earlier. What we're hoping to see second half is the Harrison Trimble pick it up, go to the air, and we'll see what happens. Right now, we're going to take it back up top to Steve Riglington and Stuart Fraser. Take it away, guys. Thanks, Jeff. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, we're here at Rocky Stone field in Moncton for the third quarter of play. Moncton High Purple Knights 35, Harrison Trimble Trojans 7. We're just about to get underway with the kickoff. Moncton High will kick off to McCarty and the Trojans rolls out of bounds at the 28 yard line. And we've got two flags in that one. Uh, the Moncton High kicking team was offside and they kicked the ball out of bounds. Now I don't know what happens in that particular case because I know they go they're moving back five yards in the kickoff, or they can take the ball there. So I, I would say, oh, it looks like they're, 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 I think, you know what? Trimble just wants to get on. They just want to get on the field now and do things. That's what the, the way that offense came out like that, I'd say they want to get on the field and make things happen. Okay, so they do the calculations and uh, we start with a line of scrimmage at the Trimble 40. So the Trojans are first and 10 at their own 40 yard line as we begin the third quarter of play. I don't know if fire and brimstone at work in uh, what do you think happened in the dressing room in terms of inspiration? Just get back to basics and do what you know how to do. They're going to play what they call Trojan football. Win or lose, they're going to give their heart for this, the rest of this game. And you're going to see effort. Too good. Going to the air. Has time. Gets it up. It is. Did he grab it? As it bounced away, I believe we'll wait and see. It's like the tie goes to the runner in baseball, the tie goes to the receiver. Yeah, it looks like they are counting it as a catch. And the ball will advance to the 49 yard line. He'll be just about a ball length short of the first down. Here's the replay. Now you see, you see a double fit, little play action. Waits, 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 waits. Looks like he had his arm hit or something. Yeah, a little bit of a soft launch there, I thought. I, I think they're going to have to be more decisive in their passing game. They're going to, they're going to have to step and throw it more in a row. If they hang the ball up, the defensive backs from uh, Mountain High are, are good enough that they're going to close. Trojans second and less than one for the first down. There's the give to McCarty. McCarty finds room. He's got plenty more than he needs for the first down. It'll be first down. They'll move the sticks. They'll move into Purple Knight territory. Uh, the line of scrimmage will be at the 51 yard line of uh, Moncton High. You can just sense already, Steve, there is a determined Trojan team. And, but we don't know how they would have finished the half because they weren't getting the ball. I mean, with the turnovers and things that occurred and, uh, and points. Interesting to have seen the time of possession for the Trojan offense. I'm, I'm sure well tilted towards Moncton High. Bad snap. Too good has to come up with it. He does. It goes down a little bit on the slippery surface, and he'll get about six yards on the play. Did that break? I, I wonder about condensation. You were out on the field. Any condensation underfoot? No, no. I, I'm thinking what what is happening. The, the people with the molded bottom shoes, like a, a soccer shoe with a, you know a, a molded mm -hmm. bottom as opposed to a posted screwing cleat, those would be the type of people that are slipping. Or the longer cleat will dig down into the into the turf and the pellets. Too good, and the Trojans are now knocking out there at the 46-yard line. They have a second and five situation. Too good wants to pass. He's complete for the first down uh, to his receiver, uh, number 89. That is Boulay. And that's just here's a, the here's just the replay. An in route. We have a clear for the wide receiver. Uh, the inside receiver clears down the seam. He just runs around, runs a little in route, sits in a hole, and there it is. And that's what they do very well. They do that very well, probably as, as well as any team. And, uh, and to get back in this, they're going to have to do it. Trojans pressing now. They're at uh, first and 10 at the 33-yard line of Moncton High. Too good wants to pass. He's got choices there. Pass is complete to number eight. Eight has blockers. Nothing but running room. That's a touchdown. Well, right? let's see. Yep. Yes. Touchdown, that's number eight of the Harrison Trimble Trojans. That is Matt Seeley. 
Compliments to the triple coach. That's an excellent call, a screen. Are they looking, everybody's backing up. Just a screen play where he rolls out the one side and a throwback screen left, we'd call it. And uh, basically, just the other uh, linemen will hold the block for a minute, let them through, let them after the quarterback, and then he'll dump off to the far side. Convert is good. So we are two minutes and 44 seconds in. We have a response from the Trojans. It's now 35-14. This had to happen. This had to happen, and, and, and Coach Mark Teed went in and spoke to them and basically just said, you, know, you play Trojan football, you, go, you start believing like you finish the season and start doing things. Now we'll have to see how will the defense answer. 30, they, they took just uh, two minutes and 44 seconds to make a statement here, so we'll see if the Trojans can string it together. Uh, once again, they will kick off to the Purple Knights. Just, I think we're gonna put some lights on in the booth so we can see some numbers here. Get a little, little glare back, but not that bad. Here's the kick. Great ball placement. Not out of bounds, but he picks it up at the six. That's too good. Still in motion, but he'll get out to about the 16. That was a great punt. It just uh, like it had a Tiger Woods hitting the green. It just had backspin and it stuck right there. I thought it was going to roll out, but it just stuck right there in the turf. And uh, I mean, if you want things to turn around, they've started the second half the way they want it to go. Now, can the defense answer? This is key. The Purple Knights uh, deeper than they've been uh, in this game thus far, as far as a uh, starting position. They are first and 10 at their own 16 yard line. Stu has rightly pointed out that uh, the D has to hold here for the Trimble team. There's the give to McDougal. McDougal finds some room. Not too many people. McDougal on the run. He still has running room. Only one man there to make a difference. He does. McDougal is tossed out of bounds at the 40, at the 50 yard line of Trimble territory. A shoelace tackle makes the difference right there. That got to Moncton High. That was a crucial play. No, I shouldn't say a crucial play for Moncton High, but it was reestablished what they were going to do and uh, has Trimble back in their haunches again defensively. Somebody, they've got to come up and make some plays. Trojans have got to fire off the ball. Contain people, cannot let them get outside. That's an additional 45 yards for McDougal. We know that in the second quarter he was already up to 120. A little bit of a run in the park for the quarterback from Moncton High there, Rogers. First down and more. He has got speed, Stu Fraser. Well, they've uh, they've got a lot of arsenals there. They really can. They, you know, as far as uh, the weapons, they've got, you know, their quarterback. They've got McDougal. They're doing things very well. And uh, uh, when you have athletes, and we always said that there's no, you, you don't coach speed. It's something you have or you don't have. And uh, we've got some people from Moncton High that that want to win this. They want to play hard, and uh, they're stepping up and moving the ball. Rogers to McDougal. McDougal outguns the Trojan defense. Motors, Motors. He's inside the 25 to the 22 yard line. He's gonna. I, I'm sure he'll. I'm sure he'll break 200 yards today. Oh, yeah, sure. He, he's he's got to be close to that now. I would say there's another uh, healthy gain for them. But again, they're losing contained. They're not getting. They're not getting the edge. They've got to step out and force them back inside. He actually lost lost the handle on the ball, but I suspect it was contact with the ground prior to that coming loose. Rogers to McDougal. We've got flags everywhere. McDougal runs. He is to the 10 yard line. I believe we had too many men on the field for Harrison Trimble. We've got a man down as well for Moncton High. That is number 10, Luke Constantine. Oh, he's back up again. Okay, good man. Let's wait and see what the flags are. Flags, we'll wait and see where they spot the ball. Okay, first down for the Purple Knights. Regardless, the line of scrimmage will be up at the 11. 
illegal substitution is the call. Right. Can you explain the concept there? What happened? Well, what happened? They had they had 13 men in the field. By the time they got, uh, um, or maybe it was 14 men in the field. I'm not sure. By the time they they got uh, uh, the play in and, and everything was ready to go, there was still a person on the uh, on the Harrison Triple team that was running off the field. So he's it's really I don't know why they wouldn't call it. Uh, uh, too many men, or somebody might have come into the game and went out of the game again. And sometimes you, you have to you have to come in and stay for a play, or go out and stay for a play. So it could have been a comedy. They seem to be doing a bit of this, and, and there's somebody again late coming in for Trimble. Constantine was okay under his own power. McDougal given the ball. We got flags again. McDougal takes it in across inside the ten. We have a holding call against uh, uh, against Milton High. So they want to back them up. I, I would I would dare say they back them up. I know they give them first down again, but you get them as far away from your end zone as you can. Okay, they'll add. They'll add ten. If you're just joining us, ladies and gentlemen, we're in the third quarter here at uh, Moncton's Rocky Stone Field, 35-14. It's the 12-man high school football final here on Rogers TV throughout New Brunswick. Welcome aboard. You're truly Steve Ridlington handling the play-by-play. -play. Stu Fraser is our color commentator and Jason Reith is our sidelines reporter this afternoon. Purple Knight shotgun. Rogers airs one. Oh, number 80. Travis Joyce was the intended receiver. The pass incomplete. Well thrown ball. Well thrown. That would have been a that would have been a championship catch. That would have been a championship catch. He sets back, airs it out, steps into it. Nice throw. Nice throw. And those are those are championship catches. These are highlight reel catches. Yeah, let's talk about let's talk about the relationship between wide receivers and quarterbacks. From your experience, that's a, there's a special bond there, isn't there? Well, yeah, you know, there's potential for six receivers on on the field at any time. If you count inside receivers, outside receivers, and both running backs, and it's wide receiver. If they spread it, or, or as a receiver, if the quarterback spreads it around, and you're every sixth time it comes to you, and you don't catch it, well, you don't have much of a rapport at all. So yeah. if you know that you have your quarterback's ear, and he knows that he can throw, and you're the person going to catch it, you'll see a lot of balls coming your way. And of course, you know we know about receivers uh, through football that have, have been such players like that. So uh, it. it uh, um, I, I'm really pleased with that. You know, the, the Monkton High is throwing the ball as he did because they, they still have to, you know, he was open. He, he got behind the triple defender, so they've, uh, they've got to keep the triple team honest. They can't just send everybody in every, every gap because they still have to cover that pass, which I suspect you'll see again. Here we go. Rogers going to that corner once again. Touchdown, complete. Touchdown. Oh, that is complete to Matt Tugger. Cousin Matt picks up a six-pointer. Yep, I mean, he, the, the person was over them. Uh, you've got to have a ball call. We see in defensive uh, football that when the ball's in the air, you know uh, that the, you, you look at your receiver uh, or a defensive back will look at the person they're covering. If their eyes start to get as big as saucers, you know it's coming your way. So whether they heard a ball call or not, because uh, the, the Trimble, uh, the Trojan, was, was there, but just didn't turn, maybe not, didn't hear the ball call and didn't have a chance to make a play in the ball. Convert is good. With the converted touchdown, Moncton High 41, Harrison Trimble 14. Jeff Reith, uh, thoughts from your side of the field uh, as uh, the Trojan ship takes on more water. Well, I talked to the coaches, both coaches, after the break at halftime, and uh, Mark Teed said that he talked to his troops in the uh, in the locker room and said, look guys, we just got to take this one play at a time, put some points up on the board. They're very pleased with that opening drive and scored the points. And as he called, he said, it's just basic football one-on-one. -on -one. We just got to score. Talked to the Moncton High head coach, John Alnack, and he said that he had to settle his kids down and say, look guys, these guys can get into this game and put score, put points back up in a hurry. So let's not lose sight of what the what the prize really is. We've just seen two both teams exchange uh, touchdowns. So both are pretty up, but they're both just a little down too. I think as, as having let some points go in. Thanks for that, Jeff. And uh, just Stu, there the, was yeah. the replay. And we can see that the, the 28 was right uh, was right on him. It would be a uh, John Taylor was right in his back pocket. But. Major crowd there as a bit of a rugby scrum as the mass moves forward. Decent return by the Trimble return man. 
That was McCarty. He brings the ball out to the 45. Not bad, not bad field position whatsoever. No, anytime we said, anytime you can get the ball out over the 35, well, it's a decent return. It's kind of like that 20 yard line in the NFL. You see, if you can get it over the 20, bring it over the 35 in Canadian football, you've got a, a decent turn. And, and if you can stop them, uh, if you're a kickoff cover uh, team, you can stop them inside of 35, you won that game. Our 5,000 plus crowd on the screen there, they're, they're hanging with every exciting moment of of this game. It's about to get more exciting from the passing point of view, I think. Too good in the Trojans out to McCarty. McCarty on the give. That is number 89. He's got plenty of coverage, got some great blocking before he's brought down on the tackle. And uh, that was number 89, Boulay. And Brandon Cowell just made a great tackle for Monk and High. He fought off three defenders to get in there and make that tackle. You can see that when you watch 48, he, they, they've got like, you know, a reverse and look the, the Trimble people out in front here. But somebody fights through off the defenders and makes a tackle. You see him shoot through and he makes a tackle while people are on him. That was a great tackle. That was 48, uh, that is Brandon Caldwell. Brandon Caldwell made the tackle there. There's a crowd shot. Check and see if you can see Cousin Frank. Is he there? <laughs> nope, nope, okay. Uh, referees having a bit of a uh, chat. There's the Trimble huddle. And uh, there's our officials. They're just uh, checking with the chain gang to make sure they have an accurate measure in terms of ball placement. Just to make sure those lines are, the city wants to paint those lines straight. First down for Trimble. That'll move the sticks and uh, not quite. It's it's on the tight rope as to whether it's in Trimble territory or Moncton High territory. It's right on the center field stripe. So I have a question for you about the rapport between players and officials in the in the intensity of play. We'll we'll get to that in a moment. Two good fakes. He's going to toss it. Gets a quick one away. Fox was the intended receiver, the pass incomplete. No, in the thick of the traffic when you've got uh, 24 players and uh, four or five officials out there, you, there's got to be collisions, there's got to be exchanges. What, what's it like in the thick in the thick of a game situation? Well, I, I'll plug something for the officials. I know in, in, uh, in New Brunswick, and especially this, this mountain area, there's a lot of uh, quality officials in the mountain area. You, you, they're, not, they're a coach in the field. I've always, when we, I started playing back in the Minor Football Association of Moncton, they're a 13th player in the field. They're there to help you. Here we go. We'll get more on that thought in a minute. Too good. Gets it up complete to number 89 and great second effort after the catch. That is Boulay. We're going to see some nice plays here, uh, uh, Steve, because that's what Trimble's got to do to get down. Uh, he's moved the ball big chunks at a time. But getting back to the official bit was that they're the, like the 13th player. They're to, he they're to help you. And I always found that you treat them with respect and, and they will. So here he is, he just lofted up the sideline. It's a very, so, uh, very safe play. It's either caught or out of bounds. And it's a nice catch, turns it up, you know, and, and you can see that the effort is here. And that's all Coach Mark Teed is gonna want from his boys the rest of this game is 100% effort on every play. Don't leave anything on the bench. Nice pump fake. Too good. Interception, we've got flags on the play. The intended receiver was Fox. That's uh, too good. Now, did the official intention to lose his cap, or do we have another penalty there? We have there? another flag. So we have two. We have a block in the back, and I believe we have a uh, pass interference. So obviously the... Uh, yep. Yep. There's, a, there's, a, there's a, trivia, a trivia question answer for, to impress your <laughs> football fans. In the event that the official has tossed his hanky already, what is the next device he uses for a subsequent penalty? His hat, but I want to know if there's a third one when he throws. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hello. <laughs> So there you go, next cocktail party, you can mention that you know that the hat goes next. <laughs> Pass interference against the Purple Knights. Now, I know there's a yardage demarcation between where the pass would have landed and if it, I guess if it's less than 15 yards, it moves to the point of the catch or what, what's the rule in well, that I, I interference think, call? I think it's 15 yards up. If it was in the end zone, it would, be, it would go to the one yard line if it was in the end zone, but it wasn't in the end zone. So I, I'm, I'm suggesting that it's going to be 15 yards up or if it's Point like you contact. said, uh, if it's inside, where did they scrimmage from? At 33? So yep. it should be it should be about uh, the 18 yard line, I would think. And yes, you are. It's at the 17. So first and 10. 
There is a, there is a, uh, we might remind you, there is a four converted touchdown insurance policy currently in the hands of the Purple Knights, but still, the threat is the threat. I believe that's McCarty. We'll wait till they peel away. Yes, it is. And he picks up four yards. It'll be second and six, Stewart. They're, uh, they're at the 13. Here's a replay for you. Yeah, nice fake by the quarterback. You see, he's just faking a little swing pass, but he gives to McCarty. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, he's, he's got some wheels. We know that because he returned one of those, uh, that kickoff for the, for the, uh, the, the distance. So. Want the high player down we have? Yes, that is, uh, that's uh, that's Rogers, I believe. It would be, no, he's not playing both ways. There's a seven on oh, the end, that's Morris. Go. Yes. Eric Morris, so. One of the defensive linemen. Yep, great, great shot by our camera crew. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, a, a tip of the football helmet to the men and women of Rogers TV for their fine work this afternoon. You're truly Steve Ridlington handling play-by-play -play at this game. And with me is Stu Fraser, the Canadian uh, football icon in terms of you've seen all levels. You've come up through the minor program, played high school, played college, played professional in the CFL, and uh, returned to the game as a coach. So, And, uh, and, and I'm lucky enough with the uh, Moncton Football Association, who incidentally are celebrating their 50th anniversary here, uh, to have coached at the Pee Wee, the Bantam, and the, uh, and the high school level. So once it gets in your blood, it, it stays there. It's a great game with great people. And here come the Trojans. He's looking. There's the give to Fox. Fox, nobody there. Fox on his feet, carries the receiver inside the five. He's got first down. They'll be first and goal. Line of scrimmage probably at the three-yard line. As this game progresses, I mean, you're seeing what I'm sure that, but this is effort. You know, that's execution, a good play. But this effort, turn it back and say, I'll give everything I can. And that's all they can ask these young men, give everything they can. So two good in his Trojans, and we're back live. They're at the three-yard line. First and goal. Two good takes the snap. The give to McCarter. No, great. He's stuffed by the purple D. He'll get he'll get a marginal advance. One. He's got two yards. It's second and goal at the one. So these are these are uh, these are efforts for respect. I think Stu Fraser, as the Trimble Trojans know, they're in a 28 point hole but they're trying their level best to close that gap. Too good. Takes the snap on the quarterback keeper. We've got flags on the play. The official have signaled the TD on the quarterback keeper but we have a flag on the play. We'll see uh, what impact that infraction has. Offside Monkton High so we've got another touchdown by Trimble. And Harrison Trimble, that's too good on the on the keeper. John Toogood takes it in himself for the major. And we'll wait for the convert. That comes at 9-13 of the third quarter. And uh, all the scoring since the half has been uh, by the Trojans. Convert is good. With two minutes and 47 seconds left in the third quarter, uh, the Trojans have had the score. It is now Moncton High 42, Harrison Trimble 21. Well, people like to see offense, and they're seeing some tonight. I just hope that now, uh, is it too early in the game for Trimble to try an onside kick? The advantage, uh, the advantage that this particular one, as we see the convert, the advantage of uh, onside kick, you're going to get the ball back, you're going to score. The disadvantage is you get Moncton High, if they recover the kick, you're going to give them the short field to work with. So you're into a decision. You know, the defense is going to have to stop them. They have to, whether they stop them down in their end or stop them after an attempt at an onside kick because they need those points. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a you know, six and one, half dozen the other. You have to decide. You know, the coaches have has to decide. But I see that sign over there, don't stop believing behind the Trimble bench. And if they can uh, buy into that right now, they, you know, they, we, we've seen stranger things happen. 21 points were scored in 53 seconds in the second quarter. Okay, uh, Jeff, uh, just quickly, uh, what's happening on the Trimble bench uh, after that play? 
They're pretty excited about it, but they're studious. They, they want their defense to pay attention to what's going on out there. The defense got them to this point in the in the season. Uh, the defense is what allowed them to win some of their key games to get to this point. Now they want their defense to step up, and you can help, you can hear the defensive coaches uh, trying to uh, get them to, to step up their level of play to match the offensive play that we've seen so far this quarter. All right, thanks for that, Jeff. We got an instant replay of sorts here, Stu Fraser. I think they went ahead. Uh, the boot got off before the whistle blew, if I'm understanding things correctly. Well, they showed their hands, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I can see that now. Um, yeah, they have to wait for the, the official to, to signal time in. So no, they're not going to fool around now. Too good. It rolls out of bounds at the five. We've got a flag on the play. One assumes that what intentionally. Now, I, I believe they can field the Monkton High can field the ball at the 40 yard line. I, I'm, I'm really not sure exactly. They, I see okay. some officials marching along the 40 yard line. Yeah, I think what happens is they, they call it intentionally booting it out. Is that right? That the infraction? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So they take it on the 40, which is you know, go, uh, good for, for Monkton High. Um, Trimbles, they've got 246 left in the third quarter. Let's see what the defense says. What what do they do? We, we saw the, with the touchdown that Monkton High scored uh, in, in the when they answered to Trimble's first touchdown of this half, that the receiver uh, was covered, well covered, but the, the, the defender just didn't call. So they, they've all got to dig down deep. Every Trojan there has got to dig down deep and see what they can answer to make this a, a ball game out of this yet. That's Rogers and the Knights coming back now. Give to McDougal. There's a flag on the play. McDougal in motion, beats tacklers. He'll get about seven or eight yards on the play, but let's see what that is about in terms of the red hanky. I see the sideline official pointing to Monkton High, so it could be some type of a procedure or a illegal alignment, I'm not really sure. Okay, we'll wait. Offside, offside is the call, in fact, against the Purple Knights. That'll push it back five yards. They'll keep first down, though, I believe. Now what I'm seeing basically is the uh, 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 Mark McDougal and the uh, Dylan Rogers show here. And yep. We have a solid offensive line. So if I was uh, to to suggest, I would suggest that Dylan Rogers might be hanging onto this ball. Mind you, they've got a, a, a pretty good receiver out there in uh, in Too Good. So uh, first and 15. He split wide to the left. So okay, he's got receivers, but he's in close to his snap. So we'll see. They'll give it to McDougal on the left side. Got some blocks before he's brought down. He'll get uh, probably about eight or nine yards out of the 15 yard reality that he needs. And there's a blow to Harrison Trimble. Uh, John Cornett, uh, not John Cornett, but Chris Cornett comes in, just misses, blows by a tackle, then comes back and makes a tackle, 33 pursuing, but he came down hard and he has a history of a shoulder problem. And he's still down in the field, so uh, he, he's a heck of a ball player. And uh, it looks like, to me, he's favoring his shoulder. All right. Okay, well, let's go over to Jeff. Jeff, uh, your perceptions, what are, the, what are they looking at? Yeah, it's certainly uh, Chris's shoulder. Uh, he missed the first two games of the regular season this year and then came back. Uh, and uh, he did pop it out, separated it against McNaughton. He's coming off, he's using his hands, he seems to be okay, but as I know with a separated shoulder, even the slightest little pop can sometimes make it awfully painful to continue. But we'll have to see if he comes back into the game. I'll try to get you an update. Thank you for that, Jeff. Jeff Reith, our sidelines uh, reporter for tonight's game. We've got 148 and time running left in the third quarter, 42 to 21 in favor of the Purple Knights. If you're just joining us. And well, the ball carrier. Let's see, Trimble has answered twice in this half with touchdowns and they're gonna get the ball back. It's third, I'll uh, yeah. be punting, so can they make a ball game out of this yet? All right, they let, they'll have reasonable, uh, reasonable field position on the punt, we'll see. Uh, Line of scrimmage at the 40. He'll be punting from about the, the low 30s. And Fox, the ever dangerous multifaceted player, is back as the single receiver on the, uh, the punt return team. <clears throat> Let's see, that is a uh, number seven. That's Sam Zaid. He will punt for the Knights. Gets one away, 
Comes down, that is taken, but probably no yards by my estimation. That was uh, number four, Rocklow. He's a multi-dimensional player as well, but yes. we have two flags down. Looks like we got a perhaps a push here, in the back. Watch and see here. I can't really. I think we have a push in the back, perhaps down here, if you look just to the right of the ball carrier. You might see a push in the back. I'm not sure. I didn't. No, I didn't see anything there unless it had behind the play. Okay, they're still working it out. It appears to be a, an assessment against. Okay. He, he showed the benches, but not us. Let's let's see if he will share it with us. Ooh. Here we go. No yards. No yards the call. Well, here they are in a position again. Okay, the Trojans want to make a statement here. They have a great field uh, position. They're first and 10 at the Purple Knight 41. 110 remaining in the third quarter. Too good. Lays one up. Fox, the intended receiver. He went up and got it. Complete. And Fox is inside the 10. That's an example, Steve, we said before. We've got to keep the ball outside. Because you can keep the ball out to the sideline. He goes right down the sideline. Nobody, the, the safety cannot come over and make a play on it. He just lays it to his outside shoulder. He goes up and gets it. A heck of a play. He was well defended. There's just one athlete against another athlete, and the bigger guy can balance it. They are first and goal from the seven. Too good. Rolls out. Wants to find somebody. Intercepted. Intercepted by a number 41. That is Brett Gray. He's a defensive all-star in the Eastern Conference. And I see why now. That's, as, a, as a linebacker, as a, as, a, as a quarterback, you're looking down. You're looking at the people covering your receivers. But he just slid underneath this. Uh, too good. Did not even see. He did not even see that. He just went out into, the, into a, a flat coverage or he made a man coverage on the, on the back. He, the quarterback did not even see him. That was an excellent play by that young man. Excellent play when Moncton High needed because you can see that the Trimble was driving and Moncton High needed. That's an excellent play. And the multidimensional Fox actually made the tackle uh, after the interception. So uh, he commits at all levels. Here come the Purple Knights. They are first and 10 from their own nine yard line. That was McDougal once again. If you want to chat for a minute, I'll slip over to the stats man and see if we can get new numbers on McDougal. So sure, that, just take over for a minute if no, you would. No problem. That was, a, as you can see folks at home, that, that, that the Trimble we said earlier had to step up. And Jeff, what do you think? I mean, it looks like the defensive line or the defensive Trimble is going ahead and, and actually making some plays, trying to, like we said before to Steve, that you just can't leave anything on the bench. There's no. your one kick at it, you just got to go at it. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. They're starting to peel off some of those lead blockers, letting their linebackers make the plays. You'll notice that Cornette is in the game. They've just popped the ball out. I just saw it right here. Oh, I, I got to tell you, I watched that ball pop out. If they blow that dead, that was that was a tough call for Trimble because uh, that ball came out. You're right. That, that hit the turf and bounce right into his arm. How can... Oh, that's... All weird. right, let's see. I he He's back. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was uh, that was too sad. We're going to see a replay in this. I now I know, it, and it ended up that the, the guy stuck him, and the ball came right over, bounced right into uh, Cornette's hands. There's the ball. How can? Yep. All right. We'll wait and see. They're going to change hands, ladies and gentlemen. Three quarters of this game are over. After three quarters of play, Moncton High Purple Knights 42. And the Harrison Trimble Trojans 21. You're watching the 12 man provincial high school football championship game live here on Rogers TV.
Here we are at the start of the fourth quarter. We just saw a huge play, Moncton High and, and Harrison Trimble. Harrison Trimble has really come alive here in the third quarter, going into the fourth quarter. But it looked like that ball came out a little early, but it was a quick whistle, and it looks like Moncton High is going to keep the ball. A bit of a downer for Harrison Trimble. Up to the top to Steve and Stu. Thanks, Jeff, very much. And uh, that'll generate a little chat around uh, football circles, but hey, we're up here and the, uh, the refs are down there. And That's right, it's easy to second guess when we've got people providing all kinds of coverage on us. Oh, a great bounce in favor of uh, the Moncton Purple Knights as Fox uh, had to deal with a rogue bounce. And the special teams coverage by the Purple Knights in tight there. That was no, that was a that was a good play, excellent kick. And you're right, as, as it said, to get the, the the Knights bounce on that one. And it was interesting. I was just wondering. I was looking at the sideline as uh, as Fox was going back. I, he almost stepped out of bounds and he was trying to retrieve that ball. I, and I, I have to wonder what would the ruling be if he threw himself out of bounds? Can he go back and play the ball? I'm just curious about throwing some things up there, Steve, as we talk. Here come the Trojans now, shotgun formation. They're first and 10 at their own 45. The snap to two good, two good looking. Airs one up in the direction of Fox. In traffic, it's grabbed, intercepted by number three of the Purple Knights. They are back with the ball, Jordan Badar. We talked about the two good Fox connection, but uh, watch this. Now he was a, uh, they had a bit of vice coverage, right? Called inside and outside coverage on him. It was it threw it down there, but that was a great interception. That was battling for the ball. And that's a good athlete. That's a fine young man, Jordan Bernard. And once again, the Purple Knights are in offensive possession. A quick turnover there. And like I say, you and I talked about this earlier, Stu Fraser. Uh, the Purple Knights are hitting on all cylinders. All dimensions of the game are, are in motion today. Rogers, the pass complete to number seven. He gets the ball inside the 10 yard line. That is Saim Zaid. Just a great effort and you can see the Knights faithful are appreciative of that effort. There is a flag on the play. Objectionable conduct amongst the high. I think it looks a little push or somebody when he get up from the pile, or whatever it might be. So that'll take it back. Ten, uh, ten, maybe. We'll watch as they pace it off. Ten, it is. That was a seam route. He just ran straight down the seam, and, and it, it's when I say seam, it's basically between two areas of the defense. You know, certain players cover certain areas on the field of defense, and where one player covers one, another player plays another. In between those two areas is what we call a seam, and and uh, Sammy just uh, ran right down the uh, right down the seam, and it was it was a beautiful throw by uh, uh, Dylan Rogers. We've got some athletes. We said in the very beginning, we do have athletes out here, and they're making plays. All the names we talked about before are featured first and 10 for the purple knights they're at the 20 they're knocking at the red zone and the officials still conferring the clarifying things white hat of course is the captain of the ship he's being consulted by his crew and uh, don't forget attendance in excess of 5,000 here for this final just Outstanding. And how about yourself as a CFL veteran looking forward to the uh, Toronto versus Western opponent uh, coming up in 2010 at the new uh, University of Moncton Stadium? That should be a, a treat for fans everywhere. No, I think so. I, and I applaud the CFL for doing this because they do want to make it a, a, Canadian, a Canadian league. Complete to two good. Stutter step. Out of bounds, pushed out of bounds at the four yard line. There's two good. His cousin is the uh, quarterback for Harrison Trimble. Take us through the replay. Well, it just looked like a, a little bit of a, well, a kind of down and stop, or, or we, we call it a little bit of a hitch. He's following his blocking, just trying to get down there as best he can. And uh, you can almost sense that uh, the desperation in Trimble and, and the confidence now, you know, starting to ebb through, through with, uh, with uh, Moncton High because they, they realize time is definitely a factor. Here's the give. Call it McDougal, yeah, he'll be close to 200 yards. And we meant to tell you that uh, 
I, when I was away just checking moments ago, and there's the fan hood. Uh, McDougal was at 196 yards, so I'm sure by the end of the game he'll be in excess of 200 yards in this championship final. Have it, have it. One of the big guys uh, for Trimble is Dow. That is a number uh, 65, Stacy Stewart. Stacy Stewart, the lineman. Jeff, are you getting any sense uh, of, of you know uh, impending doom over there? Can you can you can you feel anything? Is it quiet? Can you can you hear the chatter one way or the other? Well, I, I, I do see that the Trojans are a little quieter in the sideline than perhaps they were a couple of minutes ago when when it looked like they had uh, some momentum behind them. Uh, I wouldn't say doom yet. There's still some smiling and, and you know encouragement to try to get their players going. Uh, Chris Cornett did decide to play again against the uh, advice of the trainer over here. Uh, uh, John, uh, the trainer, said that he sh probably shouldn't play. Uh, one other interesting note that I'll pass your way. I just heard from Robbie Weir, the offensive coordinator for Moncton High. The last couple of plays that Moncton has run down here since they were at the 40 were all all audibles. So uh, Dylan Rogers is calling his own number, calling his offense out there and really showing some leadership. Thanks for that, Jeff. We'll be back to you as the quarter progresses. Right now, knocking at the door, Rogers on the keeper. He runs, heads it up, passes intended for seven, flags on the play. There's an interception there. That was grabbed by Fox, but there is a flag in the end zone. I think they have an illegal receiver down. I think maybe a lineman with downfield, perhaps. Yeah, watch it. See what you can see. If you there. can see a lineman downfield in the end zone, that would be an illegal receiver. Uh, there, there's an illegal lineman right there. You can see that. Uh, uh, I think maybe. I think maybe he might have been downfield. I'm not sure. Okay, they're chatting. They all like to know the impact of the situation. Penalties declined. That's an first down. And they should have the ball in the 20. Here they go. So Trimble. All right. So that's got to be a, that's got to be a motivator. Remind you, they uh, score 42 in favor of Moncton High Purple Knights, 21 for the Harrison Trojan Trimble. Harrison Trojan Trimble. The Harrison Trimble Trojans. There we go. 9:43 left in this, the fourth quarter. The ball is on the Trimble 20. You're watching Rogers TV in New Brunswick uh, this this evening and. Here's truly Steve Ridlington on play-by-play. -play. Stu Fraser doing the color. Jason Reith is our sidelines host. Shotgun formation for two good. He's looking for receivers on the left side. He's got a trio out there. Lays one up into traffic. Interception by the Purple Knights. Number 23 is there to shut it down. Adam Benson. Yeah, he stepped back. He, I don't think he got all he wanted on this ball. Okay, it's, come, it's a little bit wobbly coming out of there. But uh, uh, he's, he's in the traffic. They, they're, they're trying to force the ball. At this point, they're trying to force the ball into, into places and, and uh, uh, he's hoping that their athletes can come down with it. But the, the, the well-coached secondary with the uh, uh, with Moncton High, they, they sat back. They understand that what Trimble's going to have to do. They sit back and make a play in the ball. Rocklow is the, was the intended receiver on that play. McDougal. Breaks tackles. He's broken three of them to get where he got. Picked up about uh, six yards on the play. McDougal's wondering about uh, some offense or other. Let's watch well, it. You know what? This is Chris Cornett just playing football. The, the Chris Cornett plays football in a tough, tough way, and he's he's battling. He just comes in and makes a, a nice, nice play. Now, I don't know if he twists his ankle at the end, and that's what he's complaining about. It gave him a little twist in the ankle at the very end. You know, it was blocked out. But he certainly came up a little bit perturbed about something. Purple Knights have a second and three situation. The ball is at the 33-yard line of Trimble territory. And once again, Rogers. And, and there's McDougal. McDougal is a firm tackle. Got him low. We've heard that from... Uh, a fellow sitting in the booth today. <laughs> yeah, they wrapped up. They weren't wrapping up earlier in the game, and you know they, they were there, but just not wrapping up. But uh, um, you're looking at third down. Uh, do they attempt a field goal or punt it in for a single? I, y y you'd want to punt it in as far as you could if I was Moncton High, just to yep. let Trimble start in a hole. Yeah, I'm not sure if. Uh, well, I'm, this is uh, no comment, no shadow on the Moncton kicker, but that would be a 40-yard attempt. Yes. Yeah. So they're going to punt. Number seven is in and to do that. That is Zaid. So he will make the effort. We've got eight to eight left in the fourth quarter. Moncton High 42, Trimble 21. 
There's the punt. It, it rolls into the end zone. And did he stop it before it went out? Single point. Single point, says the official on that side. Now we had a block the flag in, on the play as well. We have a block in the back, and I'm just wondering. I, 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 you'd think it would be against Trimble because they were their return team. Let's watch. Here it is from the end zone. Let's see. Somewhere uh, around this, this area, yep, on the right hand side, there's sure a block. The, there it is. We just saw him get hit. A block in the back, and that's where the flag went. See the flag in the air. Yep. So that would be a um, problem. I'm trying to figure out exactly what was happening. It happened during the play. Um, is they decline it, if if Monkton declines the penalty, then it would be uh, a Trimble ball, I, I suppose, in the 20 was one yard. But if they accept it, declined, okay. one and point. The, and the single point. So there's a single point to Monkton High. And they should have the ball in the 35, I believe. So that uh, trips the score over to 43-21. Just means a two-point convert when they go back to tie it later on. <laughs> that, there you go. There you go. This with a gentleman with a garnet and white blood flowing in his veins. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we used to call it maroon and white. <laughs> okay, very good. Now, it, look, uh, I, I, something I'd like to say at this point is, is the, the coaching staff, both Harrison Trimble and Monkton High, they've been together a long time. There's a lot of, a lot of time and just volunteer time. They are a great bunch, both of them. They get along very well. As a matter of fact, they, they frequented the same establishment after the semifinal game. Last, they're, they're friends and, and tributes to all of them. Too good under pressure and uh, manages to get the pass complete. We've got a uh, penalty back uh, behind. There could be roughing the passer in there. Uh, let's see what happens back there. Uh, the pass was complete to Hamilton. Let's watch it. I would, it's a little bit of late hit, so that should be 10 or 15 yards up. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't see it, but uh, there was contact with the passer after the ball had left uh, his hands. And it is assessed against uh, the tro the uh, Purple Knights, and that that's, will be a major a penalty. That was 15 yards tacked onto where the ball was caught. Yeah, so it actually, it actually moves the ball into Purple Knight territory, so. They'll be first and 10 at the 54 yard line. And Too Good is in shotgun. Receivers wide to both sides and a trio mobile in the backfield. He's got it, some choices. Lays it up. In and out of the hands of number eight. Yes. In and out of the hands of number eight, the intended receiver, Seeley. But you know what? Landed in the lap of Adam Benson, and we have a turnover. Take us through it, Stu. Yeah, we just have. He runs a little a little in route. He sits in the little seam right there. He's got to catch that ball, and it bounces, and it traps it between his knees. to catch. You know, I think it's Moncton High's night. It's, it's Moncton High's night. I mean, not that they don't deserve it, because they do. They're well coached. Got some great athletes on that team, and the breaks are going their way. Uh, but, you know, you have to make breaks. Yep. And, and Moncton High, like I said, well coached, and they've been they've been schooled for this night for a few years. They paid their dues, I guess you could say, Stu Fraser. But here come the Purple Knights. Quick pass to Too Good. Too Good has a blocker with him. He's brought down in uh, Trimble territory at the 52. Jason Reith, that, that quick exchange and quick change of possession, your impressions from the far side. Steve, I, I hate to correct you, but you keep calling me Jason. That's my younger brother, but that's okay. My I'm father sorry. had to text, text message me to point that out to me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jeff. <laughs> that's okay. I'm sorry, Jeff. On the sideline over here, we're seeing the Moncton High is, is I think they're in a mode of babysitting their lead, so to speak. They're, they're not going to get too out of, out of control with the play calling. They just want to get the clock down, and they want to get out of this game with the victory intact. Trimble's looking for a break. I mean, those quick turnarounds are hard. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jeff. All right. <laughs> I'll let you in on an inside joke. Uh, I, I work at uh, I work as a volunteer with some of the sports teams at Tantramar Regional High, and Jeff's brother Jason is the is the principal there. So <laughs> there's this little subconscious blip happening. 
<laughs> Jeff, <laughs> Jeff, my face is red. You can see that 70 yards away. <laughs> that's, that's quite okay, Steve. It really is. I've got one piece of news that I'll throw out there. Come back to me before this game's over. The Moncton High coaching staff gave me a piece of news I'd like to pass on. Excellent. Will do. Here comes Rogers. Rogers to give to McDougal. McDougal spins and turns right up the middle. He must be 200 yards plus now. Got to be. That's just an amazing game. I have a candidate for MVP offense. Yes, yeah. No, you're right. And it was interesting to uh, pick up on what uh, uh, Jeff had uh, heard earlier from Rob Weir, the offensive coordinator, uh, play caller, about Dylan Rogers calling his, you know, uh, the, the play before last, he and that little out, that little pass to, he, you know, you can see that he's audibly, he's making decisions right then and there. Pass is complete to number 80 out in the open on the far side, tries to evade some tacklers. He does his best. That's Travis Joyce for the Purple Knights. He'll move the sticks, first down, Moncton High. And the line of scrimmage advances. They will place the ball. Let's look at it. And they're playing with confidence. You can see the uh, good protection. They, they did, uh, Trimble did some, uh, had an uncovered un, uh, man come in at him, but the ball was well away. Dylan got rid of it well before he used anybody in his face. So they're playing with confidence. You can just watch that young man as he walks up. He's directing, he's guiding, he's telling people what to do. All right? They feel confident. They've got a leader that's going to, uh, you know, finish this game for them. First and 10 of the 17, Rogers rolling out to the left. He's got a blocker there, that's McDougal. Pass is complete, touchdown! Moncton High, there's a flag on the play. A flag on the play away from it. We have an illegal, an illegal uh, lineman downfield for Moncton High, so that's gonna, unfortunately, that was a great play. Nice catch, fingertip grab, but that's gotta come back. Sam Zaid will be denied, I think, let's watch. So we have a lineman downfield. But it was nice. He's, look, he's carrying the ball. It's an excellent, a really nice fingertip grab in this. Look at that. But it's too bad. It's, it's got to come back. Okay, just you. help the viewers at home, uh, Stu. When, uh, what, what's the significance of that lineman getting where he shouldn't be? Well, you can only have so many uh, elig eligible receivers to move beyond three or four yards of the line of scrimmage. And if one goes downfield, the defense thinks there's another receiver. And if they have more receivers downfield than, than they can legitimately cover, then it would be unfair. So the, there's five linemen that cannot go downfield. Everybody else can, but there's five of them can and not go downfield. There you are. Thank you for that. That'll push the line of scrimmage back to the 26-yard line. 4:02 remaining. You know when you look, there's you a know, McDougal is down over there. He's going to be a, a, a tired puppy, I'd say. Yep. He's an intense young man. I have to admit that. He, he plays after watching him in the field. He's intense, and uh, you know he's he's. He's, he's, he's pleased to be part of this, uh, the Purple Knights, I'm sure. And uh, he does bring, as we know, he, he, bring, he brought his game tonight. So we are watching the Purple Knights break from huddle back to the line of scrimmage. They are first and 20 from the 26-yard line. Rogers over his center now. There's the give to number eight of the Purple Knights being chased. And brought down, there'll be a loss on the play. That is Colin Irving, uh, the ball carrier. Brought down by Stacy Stewart. He chased it back down. A big man chased, yep. that, chased that man, uh, chased All that right. scat back down. Yep. Here it, it is. Just pursued. Didn't, doesn't give up in the play. Just runs, runs it right down. All right. That's, that's pursuit. That's, that's effort. And that's what we were talking about. You know, the game's going to turn out how it's going to turn out. But everybody who's playing it, don't leave anything on the bench. Don't, don't what if. Anything, you're, you're, you're doing it and doing the best you can. McDougal is back in the backfield for the Purple Knights. Oh, bad snap. And it's taken by Rogers. Now, Jeff Reith, you have some news. Yeah, just uh, quickly, Mark McDougal was not hurt. His helmet actually had a bit of a problem. That's why he took a knee there. That's why he came off that one play. Anyways, just want to pass on some news. I had uh, talked to John Alnack, the head coach of Moncton High, earlier today, and he said, listen, tell you what, you can let the news go out. If we're, if we're up big in the, in the fourth quarter, you can let people know. He's on sabbatical next year. He's going to be leaving us to go to Europe to coach, where he used to play after he graduated from university at Mount A. But he will be back, so don't worry about it. He will be back to defend his championship next year. Excellent. Thanks for that. And there's the boot from number seven. That is Zaid. And Fox brings it out. He brings it out to the 10. So they'll, the Trimble Trojans will take over first and 10 at their own 10-yard line. 
You're truly Steve Ridlington handling the play-by-play -play today. Uh, Stu Fraser in the color commentator seat and Jeffrey, our sideline host. I sincerely hope that brother Jason is watching, Jeff. I believe he is, but he's in St. Andrews. Oh, ah, okay. Here come the Trojans. They are first and 10 at the 10th. That's the give to 15. He's got blockers on his way, still out to the 25 yard line and beyond. That is, can, let's see, that is Brett Robart carrying the ball. He's had some positive touches. Here's the replay. Yeah, just to determine, and uh, he's reading his blocking, picking his way. You can see black, white shirts around him. He just closes, gets the first down, keep, moves the sticks. The, the, uh, as we know now, the, the, the time is the enemy of the Trojans right now, and, and uh, uh, they're going to have to make, they, they won't be able to rely on, uh, That's Jordan, uh, on Jordan Knowles. On the running plays uh, up to mid like that. They're going to have to, you know, just try. It, it would be miracle time now. Uh, Steve, it'll be a miracle time now. It's an, you know, as you look back, uh, and Jeff, I'll just mention this to you too, Jeff, that you, you look back and, and you take away 21 points in the 55 seconds of the second quarter. And, you know, you've got one heck of a ball game. You know, but, but that's the way it goes. I mean, somebody had to score those points. Somebody had to give up those points. So we can say all kinds of things and, 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 and full marks the Moncton High. They seized upon their opportunities and they made things. They didn't have to score, you know, that many points. I mean, you know, they wanted it. They wanted it, and it came to them. So, uh, d deserving uh, Purple Knights victory. It looks like it's going to be here tonight. But the one thing I'll say on, on Trimble's point was they made a game. Of it. You know, it could have been roll over and die at the end of the second quarter. But we came back, and, and there were times when we thought they were going to yep. get back in and it. I think I think I can think you can say they owned the third quarter. Yes. So it's uh, it ain't over till it's over, as um, as Stu reminded us earlier in the broadcast that very famous Yogi Berra. Sports quotation, 221 left in the fourth quarter. Trimble is in offensive possession. They are first and 10 at their 26 yard line. We are ready to go. Too good in the shotgun formation for the Trojans. He's looking for a receiver deep, airs it. It is complete, no, out of the hands. He could not just close it. That is Matt Seeley, unable to close on the ball. Second down for the Trojans. They are back at their own 26 yard line. We have candidates for MVP. I think uh, 200 plus yards rushing is a pretty good hint. Yes, yeah. That was, uh, yeah, and we said like a number of times that their fate was uh, really in, in McDougal's hands and he, he brought it. So we'll see what transpires there. Too good on the keeper, has time. Ooh, maybe I think he dipsied when he should have doodled there, Stuart. <laughs> well, you got, you know, you, you've got to, uh, uh, you know, it's easy to sit up here watching the pick around, but at that particular time, there were some white shirts still standing and looking. That quarterback, he wanted to, he wanted to make things happen, but unfortunately, uh, some of the Trojans weren't playing to the whistle at that time. He might have escaped over there because all they had to do was knock one of those purple shirts off him, and he might still be running. 150 in the clock running. Trojans trying to get out of this, uh, their third and uh, 10 at the 26. It's all or nothing at this point in the game. There's the pass into traffic, picked off by uh, the Purple Knights. That's number 41, Brett Gray, defensive all-star with the pick. And a turnover for the Purple Knights. They will take over first and 10 at the 48. Here's the, here's I, the replay. I guess you could consider this a punt. <laughs> it was third down, and had he knocked it down, of course, they would have had the ball back, you know, 25 yards up. But, you know, you're not going to tell somebody in a championship game not to intercept the ball. So here are uh, the Purple Knights. They have an excellent field position. They're at the 48-yard line of uh, Harrison Dribble Trojan territory. 135 left. And it looks like they're giving Mark McDougall a, 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 a well-deserved rest. Timeout by the Purple Knights. Jeff, thoughts as we go into, we close in on the last minute. Thoughts from you, Jeff? 
they're hanging their heads. They're sitting. They're sitting on the benches at this point. They know that the game's pretty much out of reach. 43-21 uh, with less than two minutes to play. But you know, uh, I don't think any of them are disappointed with their season. Two and four, making a run through the playoffs, surprising a lot of people, turning a lot of heads. I think that the overall they're going to be very pleased with their year. But losing a game is never easy, and you can see that starting to, to show on their faces. Moncton High starting the celebration a little bit early. I know the coaching staff's keeping them under control over there. There is still two minutes to go, but uh, I think that this is a foregone conclusion, and the players know that. Okay, Stu Fraser, we have to watch out. I don't, I don't, there is a Gatorade bucket over there. <laughs> I see it. And there's the pass. Oh, oh, tip. oh, it was his ball, but just that tip at the end. Yeah, I think it just, just broke his concentration a little bit. He did get behind the defenders, though, but you know, you, you've got to gamble a bit at this point when you're, when you're Trimble. You've got to send a lot of heat. You can see there's rushing at least five, not six, and that means, you, you know, you've got one-on-one -on -one coverage with no inside help. So he got behind, but just enough tip to, to distract the uh, distract the Moncton High receiver. Yeah, I think uh, Pavlovich just got enough of a finger on it. Here come uh, the Purple Knights. Oh, oh, dropped the ball. It's still squirting free, but eyes open action uh, by uh, number 10, Constantine. Just saves the day. Another example of, you know, when, when, when things are going your way, they're going your way. I mean, that, that ball could have been picked up by uh, Trimble a number of times, once. And you can see that it, it's in full Heads up play. Heads up play by Constantine. Yep. 123 left in the game. Time is running. And they're just going to run the clock, do you think? No uh, no play clock in uh, in high school ball. There just is at the AUS level, just I guess. The 20 seconds, right? From yeah. the 20 seconds from the uh, when the time is blown in. And they keep the ball on the ground. They should keep the ball on the ground and just run it out. Uh, well, all right. We talked about a fumble, and uh, there's another one. It's grabbed by Corey Baldwin of the Trojans. Turnover to the Trojans. They've got a chance again. Now they've got a chance to put more points on the board. They they can get. Uh, they've lost the time. They go one timeout. They have two timeouts. So they've got lots of time to get down there. Score here, onside kick, making it a closer game than it really was. <laughs> All right. Once again, a tip of the helmet to the uh, men and women of the Rogers TV crew for packaging our broadcast this afternoon. Always appreciated. We have one minute left. Too good goes to the air. It's complete. Uh, to number 89, that's Boulay. We've talked about him throughout the afternoon. Defensive back coach Peter Story has got, uh, and uh, and he's a he's a Purple Knight uh, uh, through and through, and also a, 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 a former Mountie and a good one at that. And uh, the, he's got them backing up. You can see them on the snap of the ball. There's three deep, if not four. They're back 15 yards, and on the snap of the ball, they're still backing up. So there they're at 15 yards deep. Yeah. And uh, nobody's going to get behind them. Yeah, if memory serves me correct, uh, correctly, Peter was uh, at the 84 Vanier, if I'm not mistaken. And that is Fox, the receiver. He's got the first down and more as he carries the ball to the 40-yard line of Moncton High. They'll give up that in front. You know, you catch one in front of you, but you're not going to catch one behind me is what Moncton High is doing now. It's well-coached, solid football. And... Uh, uh, time running. I'm surprised that they let the time out there to should, the Trojans. There should be time put back on the clock because the clock was running and it shouldn't have. <clears throat> so they're going to probably come over and add a few more seconds. Yep, they are. They're asking for four seconds. Okay. That, that rumble is not thunder, but it's shaking. It's shaking the camera. If you're wondering why there's that movement, that's because the grandstand under that particular camera was being rattled by the fanhood. So, and I'd say it'd be Monk and High Hands. Yep. <laughs> yep. I think it's great for football in, in this area. I mean, the MFA, like I said before, a lot of these kids play the Mountain Football Association, celebrating this 50 year. A lot of dedicated people have gotten these athletes to the point they are, and uh, the high school coaches pick it up, and, and they've got a good group to start off with. Too good to Fox, the completion. He's inside the 25 uh, at the 21. Flag down, but you, you're going to see some players here, Steve. You're going to see them on the next level. They, they're, they're just too good of athletes. You know, we, we've, we've called a couple names here tonight that we will see in the next level if, if the colleges, the universities around here are smart and they can recruit some of these guys. Offside against the Purple Knights. 
23 seconds left. I see Fox as a candidate. I'm not sure uh, Rogers looks pretty good in terms of an opportunity. We'll see. I know the uh, we did see uh, scouts from the Mount Allison Mounties here earlier today. I'm sure there are others. Too good. And the Trojans. He's got receivers open pretty much anywhere. That's 88 on the run. Going, going. He's into the two yard line. That is Aaron Hamilton of the Trojans. 8.6 seconds. They call a timeout to save save a bit of time. They can punch this in, onside kick. <laughs> oh no, yeah. 14 points, 16 points in 8.6 seconds. Well, well, well. <laughs> We saw, we saw 21 in there. There was a great carry, yes. a great effort by the yeah. Trojans there. Yep, it's first and it's first goal. The ball is on the two. First and goal at the two. And so. I, I'll, say, I'll say it again, Steve. It just said both teams, Moncton High's night. Moncton High's night, Trimble made a game of it. They didn't leave anything. They came back after those, you know, that, those 21 points. And it, it was an entertaining game. I, I, I found it entertaining. And as we said in the very beginning, there was going to be some athletes making plays. And indeed they did. And the purple guy is uh, pretty excited as well along the sidelines. Here's Too Good. Too Good wants to take it in. No, denied. Denied yeah. by number 41. Made a statement there. And a defensive all-star, no wonder uh, uh, Brett Gray is what he is. That, we, he looks like he's going in and watch this missile. Right here, boom. That was a little John Madden, wasn't it? That's absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Boom, yeah, that's yeah. a nice hit. Yeah. Oh, the other John Madden, what is it? The turducken? The, uh, <laughs> here it comes. This is it, this is the last play. Trojans would like to make a statement here. There's the give. Oh, no nice good. Tip. Incomplete. Ladies and gentlemen, the game is over. The 2009 12-man high school football champions are the Moncton High Purple Knights. And ladies and gentlemen, the final score. Moncton High Purple Knights 43. And the Harrison Trimble Trojans 21. From Rocky Stone Field, Steve Ridlington on play-by-play, -play, Stu Fraser on color commentary. We'll be back with our game-ending wrap. And uh, and uh, before we do that, we're going to go over to Jeffrey. Well, that's the end of the game for us. 43-21 final score. It looks like Moncton High now can say that they've owned as many provincial championships as Harrison Trimble. Looks like this matchup uh, was a little bit more than the Trimble Trojans could uh, could take. If they could get those th two minutes back in the end of the first half, I'm sure they would have been a lot happier. My light just went out, so I think I'm dead. Am I still alive? Oh, okay. Uh, Anyways, the MVP is the games today for uh, both are from Moncton High. The def defensive player of the game is 41, Brett Gray, the gentleman that made that uh, hit reek towards the end of the game. And the offensive, no surprise to anybody, I think, watching the game, number two, Mark McDougall, both from Moncton High and both had great games. So goes down in the history books. It's a Moncton High championship, Moncton High win. Trimble will be back next year, I'm sure. Moncton High will be back next year. It was a good game. It was a great game, very competitive throughout, except for those two minutes at the end of the first half. And like I mentioned, mentioned before, I'm sure that the Trojans would have liked to have had that back. Anyways, we want to thank you for watching this game tonight. 2009 cha championship, 2009 football season is now over. We would like to thank Rogers for broadcasting live from Rocky Stone. Good night.